and uh, try to tear an atheist apart hour. Like they were, they were talking over her. They weren't letting the host answer, ask questions. And I'm like, look, can you guys like shut up? Cause she's asking me something. And I'd be like, no, you're going to answer me, Spatchcock. Like, uh, I, I don't know which one of them wants to date Panda. <laughs> but it was very it was very performative like and like it, it, which right. which one of you when 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 one of you beats me do you win her hand like you know does the other one have to you know look on uh, you know like a cuckold uh yeah just just a weird it was a weird display so that, yeah, that was my last exposure to, to j robin and i was like wow he really seems like somebody like you know i mean because he's he's always been kind of a rapid fire straw man type guy like you'll say something to him and he'll come back with a response that's just like you didn't listen to a word i said because that's not that has nothing to do with what i said he, he reminds me of veckel veckel's notorious for doing that veckel i've actually agreed with veckel agreed with a point that he made and he came back and attacked me and refuted yeah. his point to tell me i'm wrong and i'm like i just agreed with you you simpleton so and j robin i get the same kind of thing from j robin like he's so eager to like prove you wrong that he's not watching a step so yeah uh, he's I, yeah, I mean that's it, it really shows what their motivations are here um this is yeah. an interesting video for a couple of reasons but um oftentimes he'll be on pal talk or sorry not pal talk clubhouse and they'll just be talking <laughs> about mundane stuff and and it, he gets frustrated he's like um Okay, well, stop this. Can we can we get an atheist in here? Because he's got this need. He needs to own the atheist. Like like, let's stop the dilly dallying. Get an atheist in here. I need. He needs like a. It's it's like he's looking on the ground. He he's he, um he's he's addicted to smoking. He's looking for butts, right? He needs yeah. it. Yeah, and that's what I've, I I felt like I was talking to my brother about this this video later, and I was just like, this just seems so kind of creepy because it just seems like that kind of like the rapey incel guy that's getting frustrated with the date, you know, because he needs to turn her into a victim quickly, like you know she wants to talk about like their life and their future, and you know, eh, you know, what are your interests or whatever, and all he's thinking about is getting off, you know, and he's just super super frustrated that they're, you know, that's 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 all I saw. I'm like, he, yeah, he just wants to get his gun off. He doesn't really want to like like talk to this guy and not not that many people get an opportunity to talk to pine creek for that long right so because i mean he's got demands on his time and there's a, he gets a lot of viewers and there's a lot of people trying to call in so if he gets bored he's not going to do it but you know it's like but at the same time he's making a point of, he was making a point with this call yes yeah he was definitely he was letting him letting him talk uh, which uh, turned out to be just the right thing to do. So, yeah, unless you got anything else, I'll get started. We'll get going. No, go for it. Okay, here we go. Just holler at me if you when you want me to uh, when you want me to pause it. Robin, he wants to come in here. Let me see. Hey, can you hear me? Excellent. Let me uh, fix things because Myron always screws things up. Uh, what's your name? Uh, Robin. Robin. Are you Christian? Yeah. Non-Christian? I am Christian. Yeah. Okay. I just I was listening to the show and I, I want to know because I, I see you talking a lot about atheism versus theism and whether or not theists are scared of atheists. I, I would like to know if you, if your atheism is rational, if you have a rational defense for your atheism. No. You don't. No. You so you're completely irrational with your atheism? Yeah. Then why do you hold to it? I feel compelled to. It's in my uh, programming. Let me I get this straight. I think you're it's being, you're, so. So then why? Hold on a minute. Why? Why are you? Why are you holding <laughs> to it? It's already thing? grinning. I right. just told you. Because so I'm going to ask you. What What do you think of this this uh, this initial approach here, Time Rabbit? Uh, that's the way Pine Creek likes to do it. Um, I think. I think I mean it worked with Darth. It worked fantastically with Darth. Uh, I wouldn't. I don't know if I'd say it's irrational because I don't think Darth. Or sorry, Pine Pine Creek's not. He doesn't actually think he's irrational, right? So, but I think it's easy enough to say that it's rational. I mean, um, yeah, I think it's. <clears throat> I think it it works, but like it it was surprising that. Um, and he gets into it he doesn't i don't think he states it explicitly but he, he does kind of tell jay robin a little bit later like you know well from your worldview I, I don't i don't assume christianity is true therefore i'm irrational right 
but that's not enough for Jay Robin. Jay Robin is just like convinced. What I think is interesting is that Jay Robin just holds on to this, and anybody who hasn't watched it yet, he just keeps blood trying to bludgeon um, Pine Creek with the fact that Pine Creek is admitted to being irrational. Right. What that's... Is, what's what's odd about that is that Jay Robin is completely willing to accept uh, Doug's claim that he's irrational, but none of his claims about rationality. Yeah, I mean that's that's what I mean. Uh, J. Robin doesn't even J. Robin thinks he's being sarcastic, right? He doesn't believe that he's actually admitting to anything, and n no one would think that if you've seen any of Pine Creek, right? So, hopefully not. Um, yeah, yeah. But the I fact mean, that he the, the fact that he keeps trying to hold him to this literal this literal understanding, like, no, you said you're irrational, therefore because he just wants to win, right? And yeah, and but it, what it he's going like to do? Terrible way to do it, like. It, yeah, and what he's going to do now is going to he's going to go back to the Legion of Doom and he's going to say, "Hey, I got Pine Creek to say that he's irrational even though he knows that he, not even Jay Robin believes that he's being serious." But he'll do yeah. that. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. So I think if um if there is a god, he's programmed me this way. So so you don't have you have no rational defense of your position at all. No oh, rational defense of your position? Well, um, I do think, tell me if you disagree with this. I do think I see a lot of problems with uh, the Quran. No, that's not that's not what I asked. I mean, I'm asking, you have no rational, I'm just making this clear. Yeah. Because <laughs> you, you're running an atheist show. Yeah. You talk about atheism versus theism. And all of this is just empty pontificating on your part? No, no. Um, Good. So then what's your rational, so then you so then you must have a rational defense for your position. Then. So what's your rational? Yeah. Defense? So I look at all the different views of God and that I'm not convinced by any of them. So maybe, not, well, maybe no, I'm hold not. On a minute, hold on a minute. Yeah. Not being convinced, you're, you're appealing to your incredulity. That's a, that's a fallacy of reasoning. So maybe you are. Yeah, go ahead. Here's the thing that they do, which they always do. Right. Um, and I've called them out for this. Right. So, um, they always have this question is like, God does not exist because, and 95% of the time it's interpreted by the interlocutor is why don't you believe in God? But that's not actually what they're asking. Right. Right. They're asking, why is it impossible for God to exist? And the concept that I'm thinking of, which is just a mind, right? So anything that's not showing some sort of contradiction with that concept is a big fail to them. Right. But you here. Here's what's so telling is that um, they know this. They know that ninety five percent of people misinterpret this, and yeah. instead of adjusting their question so that it's better understood, they continue doing this. Why? Because they love this. They love them misinterpreting and then slamming them right over and yeah. over doesn't follow that doesn't follow that doesn't follow all of a sudden they i mean they just don't clarify over and over and over because they love it they love this well the thing that i find interesting about it is i think that this is this is their attempt to sort of get back after a few years of people essentially telling them that um a lot of christian um reasons for belief not arguments but a lot of the stated beliefs coming from christians about why they think god is real are circular you know, I, I believe in God because there's a book that tells me, oh, really? Why do you why do you think that that book's true? Well, because the book says that it was written by God. OK, don't you realize that's circular after after a long enough period of time of Christians who try to get into these discussions, having to take a belly full of that. They just decided, OK, well, we can just do this with them. What we'll tell them is if we ask them for we'll ask them this question. And this isn't this obviously isn't like standard apologetics, but it's, you know, whatever these guys are slithering around with in clubhouse and discord and shit um the idea is to set somebody up like you said 95 percent of people are going to think like oh you're asking me why why i think there is no god or why i don't believe that's pedestrian enough right i could just oh why don't I? well i have a problem with the uh, um you know my, my thing is the pr my problem with evil the existence of unnecessary suffering or something like that people have lots of different reasons why. right reasons why they're not convinced or reasons where they you know, like, ah, oh, this don't yeah. quite make sense to me. Yeah. But when you get into these other ones where they're like, look, if you want me to present an I, I, I got after him because he did the same thing to me when I was talking to him. I was like, you're asking me, like, because he did shift. He kept shifting back and forth. I'm like, you keep shifting be between the two. If you ask me for my reasons and then tell me that I'm committing a logical fallacy, 
when I'm giving you the reasons for why I don't believe in a God or why I think a God doesn't exist, I'm not presenting you with an argument. I'm just presenting you with my reasons for why I'm not convinced that God exists. But if you're telling me that, no, it has to, it has to be an argument for you know, proving the non-existence of a God, yeah, that might hold. I can't use those things, but, that, but you can't ask both. You need to ask one or the other. And uh, it, and he didn't he didn't like that. He thought it was a dodge, of course, and started you know crying and bitching. Um, but yeah, I, I. It's weird because they they're gonna say that they're always gonna talk about this generic. Oh, God is a mind. That's ultimate. Right. That's that's stripped down naked, right? And when you ask them though, is it any harder to defend the Christian God? They won't say. It. They're gonna be like, Oh, are you kidding me? That's easy. Right? Well, the inter- but then why are they yeah. using this god? Yeah, they they did this. Um, Enlightened did this last night. He he came into uh, he went on to answers and atheism's stream and kind of and and kind of had a little bit of a one on one with Leo Phileas, and he kind of runs the same script, almost identical. Uh, Leo, I thought, gave some pretty good answers to him, and then Enlightened did a technique that. J. Robin did to me, and I've heard J. Robin since I've been listening in on Clubhouse conversations to do at least a couple other people. Um, he's going to do the opposite to Doug towards the end of this. So if you can remind me of that, there's a good chance I'll forget. Uh, I'm not feverish, but you know, mm. I, I lost some brain cells with this last <laughs> fight with the flu. So, um, but yeah, no, it's it's really fucking dishonest. But it is part of this whole like you know the way they define God in this like kind of stripped down like. Oh, it's a it's a timeless, spaceless, immaterial mind. Right. Okay. Um, well, you know, it, you put a pin in that kind of definition, and then and and then see what they end up running into problems with later on. In fact, there's actually a story I got to tell you about that because um, when Enlightened went back to the clubhouse after going on to speed, uh, the Answers in Atheism uh, YouTube live stream, um, Darth Dawkins got after him for using the timeless definition the timeless property no oh, really yeah yeah it was it got weird but uh let's get into this because i think they might get into this a little bit i can't or remember maybe you are irrational maybe that's I, you were yeah. right the first time then okay i mean this is this is pretty embarrassing though i mean if you're running a show Why? well i mean you're running a show um and and you claim i mean i i'm hoping that you're coming to rational conclusions that's what it seems you're trying to do when you're critiquing these uh these atheists or these theists that are talking about uh different issues um it doesn't sound like you care about being rational at all so why why would anyone take uh, any weight to any of your assertions if you're not being rational well can we maybe look at points of agreement no i just like an answer to the question oh i already answered your question no, no. This, I asked a different question. Why, why would, why would one you be, why would you one be irrational? And two, why would you be running a show on YouTube, a live stream, with people watching, and and you, yeah. you're expecting people to come to your conclusions if, you, if your conclusions are no. irrational? So this is this is what I find weird about this. I agree with you that he probably knows that Pine Creek is being, you know, sarcastic and tongue in cheek from the jump, but he's wasting a lot of words on this. Like this isn't getting him anywhere. No. Well, it does. I mean. Pine Creek is his objective here is to get him off the script, right? To actually be able to talk to him, and it kind of works a little bit. You can tell J. Robin doesn't really know what to do. He's just winging it right now. But mm-hmm. what ends up what ends up happening though is that he just gets stuck on like pounding away, like you said. Oh, you're irrational. You're irrational. That's 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 it for like the next twenty minutes. Yeah, it's weird. He doesn't ever go with another. It, these guys look for like rhetorical uh, triggers. Like if they see something that's connected to like some kind of meme or a rhetorical device that they're used to, and they can grab onto that, then they'll start. They'll, they'll beat that up. They see. It, they think of it as a new weakness, and then they hammer that until you, you know, until the opponent guards it, and then they'll go after something else. But yeah, this one, he doesn't really have anything to. I mean, this is what kind of makes Doug kind of brilliant about doing this kind of stuff. Because if when these guys, you know, get you know a hard on to go after him, it's like this isn't the kind of guy that's going to give you the feedback that you want. Like especially J. Robin, if what you've been saying is true, it sounds like J. Robin is one of those guys that's just itching to yell at somebody online, which sounds kind of fucked up. I mean, that's pretty psychotic.
they can come to any conclusion they want to. Yeah, but why are you? So, but the point is that you're you're sharing your opinion, yeah. as though it has it as though it has weight, as though it has meaning, and ultimately you're being irrational. So I mean, th this this seems like a huge waste of time. Okay, well you don't have to watch. No, I'm just I'm I'm coming here for answers. I would I would expect that you know if you had any self respect, you you try to defend your position I'm like a rational adult. But apparently now he's just trying to attempt to mock well, him into defend. like, oh, I don't, I'm not irrational. Oh no, I'm going to answer your pre sub questions now. Silly. <clears throat> the who Doug? That's what J Robin is attempting is trying to insult him into goading him into a conversation the way he yeah he yeah he's, he, yeah he wants to make it about his reputation like oh well I thought you had self respect and you were an adult if you were a self respecting adult and you took your channel seriously then you 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 would take me seriously like why would he like you didn't like J Robin didn't take him seriously from the beginning like he was like you could hear the you can hear the catch in his voice like as soon as he's on here you know he's 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 ready to go. They're trying to, it seems like you're trying to do a ploy. Can I try to please you? you? No, it seems like you're trying to do a ploy <laughs> because, you are, because you are afraid of theism, particularly Christianity. And you've heard this line of reasoning before. You've heard you being being uh, placed on the, um, you know, on, on put your feet to the fire. And, and so you kind of tapping out from the, from the get-go. That's what it sounds like you're doing. Okay. But can we... Am I, am I, am I, am I correct in that assertion or an assumption? Uh, well, you said a lot there. Yeah, but I, essentially I'm saying that, and you know what I'm saying too, uh, that you've heard people ask you if your position is rational, you've been defeated every time. What does it mean uh, to be and rational? So, and so, and so as a result, when I come in here asking you if you're rational or not, then it seems like you're tapping out from the... Well, let's just is assume I mean... Is that a fair, is that a fair, is that a fair assumption? There's nothing I could say that would, I think you would agree with, like... Is so, that a fair assumption? Brian? No, 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 no. Okay, so then, so then, so then, there is another reason why you're telling me you're being irrational, but still holding to an irrational position. Yeah, because I don't think it's a it's a no win situation for me. So you don't have a rational position. So to be clear, for the fifth time, I love this. He's actually he's actually getting honest with Jay Robin at this point, but Jay Robin's not picking it up. Like this, this is to me where it gets where it gets tragic, right? He's like, no, because you know you're a preceptor, and preceptors start from the assumption that if you don't if you don't have a worldview that presupposes the existence of God, specifically the Christian God, then everything else is irrational. So anything that you just, anyone that you disagree with is going to be irrational by, by definition. And he's sort of explaining why he was tongue in cheek at the beginning and Jay Robin's still not accepting it. He's just going to go with like, no, 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 you told me that you're irrational. I'm going to take you at your word that you're irrational. Like, I, I just love that the, the, like Jay Robin is only charitable when somebody offers up something that's a weakness or self-deprecation. If they offer up something like, oh, yeah, no, I do think I have a rational argument. Oh, okay, let's hear it. Let's, let's, let's suss that out. They're like, yeah, I think I have a rational reason for why God doesn't exist. Jay Robin's like, I bet you don't. You're fucking loon, right? You, you, can't, you can't have a rational explanation from the jump because you're not a Christian. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, Doug is totally right here, and Jay Robin is so blinkered, like he's been in this for so long, he doesn't even see that Doug knows the next five moves Jay Robin's going to try to make. And he's, and he's already bored with that, he just wants to see where... You notice you know, how he dodged the question about what's rational? Yeah, yeah, I'm not going to get into definitions of rational or, or whatever. I, he's been doing that a lot, though. I've noticed that on Clubhouse, people try to pin him down. Like, hey, let's let's maybe like settle on a term. He's and I think maybe he maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you've seen other people uh, between Clubhouse and Discord. Um, but he seems to be the worst for that lately because that used to be kind of the thing. Like, hey, let's settle on defining terms, which a lot of these guys have been bad at. I mean, Darth is notoriously bad. At, you know, he'll throw a temper tantrum because he thinks that you don't understand what he means by ultimate or foundational, and well, some people right. don't. Um, but yeah, J. Robin's just gotten right into that. Can't, it fully embraced that. No, I don't have to explain shit. You know what I mean? Like, no. And you're sticking to the to the claim that you're being an irrational atheist. Is it is it rational for me to? I mean, all, honestly, honestly, the whole reason I came on here was just to see if you're being rational. But if, if you're going to tell me from the onset that you're not being rational, I don't think there's any point in continuing. What what would it take for you to be convinced that I am rational in my position? I'd like to know if you have a. But it doesn't matter. Another dog. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter? No, you don't have. You're not being. Yeah. Yeah. Another. another so these, yeah. all these things, all these questions that J. Rob's dodging are 
things that would advance the conversation, right? But J. Rowan's yeah. not interested in that. Yeah, he wants to yell at Doug. I mean, the whole thing, at this point, it starts immediately sounding like to anybody outside listening, like, well, it just sounds like this caller just wants to just wants to be on air uh, to say in as many different ways as possible that Pine Creek is wrong. Without really backing it up. But, you know, and, but then he'll, he'll try to do it with like, you know, this goofy sophistry kind of shit. You know, I'll use the Socratic method, um, but there's there's no way you can answer any of these questions. I mean, I think he's actually even gotten worse than J than Darth, because Darth still every once in a while, somebody can answer his questions. And I think even Darth gets curious if he hears a novel answer. I, I don't sense. I don't sense that with J. Robin anymore. J. Robin just always sounds impatient now. It just sounds like he wants to get straight to, you know, he sees a victim and then he wants that person dead. He doesn't actually want to go through the motions of killing him. He just wants the score. So, and he seems like put out by the fact that he has to put up the effort to even argue with somebody or yell at them for this. They should just accept the fact that he's right and they should kiss his dick or something. That's my impression of him being rational so it doesn't i mean what would it take you, for me to convince you, you mostly, mostly a waste of time what would it, it take i just want to know i just want to know if that's what you're sticking to before before i go because if you're if, you, if, you, if you're are you going to leave soon now well if you're committed to being irrational then i, then I don't think there's a point i never said i'm committed to being irrational are you, i'll, I'll just position, give you is your position is your position rationally derived or not if it's not then there's no point in talking about the subject. well there's i'll no let irrational. you be the judge okay? is your position rational or not I'll let you be Doug. the judge whether my position Doug, is rational. Doug, do you have a rational defense? <laughs> yeah, I love this. Like, he's he's offering to let him evaluate whatever his claim is, whatever his def, quote unquote defense is going to be, and Jay Robin is just interested in getting him to repeat what he started with. Right. It's it, this. I mean, at that point, it's pathetic. Like, no, no, no. I'm going to accept the fact that you said that you were being irrational. Like. You don't want to evaluate the claim. You're just going to you're going to take his word that whatever his defense is or whatever his reasons for not believing that there is no God are irrational. You just accept that. And then when, when things start, start like Robin is such a fucking sleaze. This. Ugh, ugh. Yes. OK, so, so now you're contradicting yourself because originally you said no. Well, the reason why I said no and in the is, beginning, this is live. So everyone can I'm going to have to the replay when you said no. I said, the reason why I said no in the beginning, because there's probably nothing, I know you're a pre-sub and there's nothing I can say to convince you otherwise, because if you don't accept Christianity, you're irrational by definition, right? There you go. Yeah. So it sounds like you're afraid of your own position. That's what it sounds Good like. Good answer. Because Another why, dog. Why would, why would you compete <laughs> to what I think? Hey, Robin. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like, okay. He, if, yeah, if Jay Robin wasn't picking it up, you know, through implications, there it was from Doug explicitly why Doug started that way. And Jay Robin wants to now at this point, Jay Robin is going to um, instead of just trying to like hang this guy with his own words, even though they were tongue in cheek, he's going to act in bad faith at a point where it's just it, it, now it, it just becomes a really obvious straw man. Because um, no matter no matter what he does at any point, J. Robin feels like he can always retreat back to the safe space of, yeah, but you started off the whole thing saying you're irrational. Like that explanation that Doug gave him made no would makes no difference for J. Robin. J. Robin got the his first bone and he's gonna he's gonna bank everything off that defense, even though it's now totally irrelevant. instead of defending your own position robin if i so answer do you, so do you, so you do so robin clear, you do have a rational defense for your position yeah okay how does it follow logically that there is no god then? okay because when i read the song quran, and dance i see like there's a certain prophecies in the quran that's supposed to be the word of god and i see that they fall flat and so i i, I don't believe that that's just a very short simple i didn't ask you about the quran well you're asking about god right I'm asking, how does it follow that there is no God? 
what's your what's your Lord? I just told you uh, Be justification because I don't believe that God exists if the Quran represents the, that's, the word of that's a bait and that's a bait and switch answer because now you're now you're appealing to local atheism, not global atheism. You're a global atheist. Atheism without qualification denotes global atheism. The divine. I Are you saying that, that it's irrational? Am I what's that? I don't think Doug is that. I don't. He's I don't an atheist know. without qualification. Doug thinks there's a contradiction between like any concept of God. I don't think that's true. I don't. Yeah, and I don't think in terms of ph philosophical arguments he would care. And I, I, the one thing though I I think is odd about this because I mean Darth's been doing the global. You know, you're a global atheist. You know, um, these guys want to do the global atheist. Like, hey, I just want you to you know. You know what's what's so hard for you to what's so hard for you to accept about a a spaceless timeless immaterial mind that is responsible for the creation of abs the creation and maintenance sustenance of absolutely everything in our reality um like well what you're defining into existence sounds like could just as easily not exist given the properties you just gave it it doesn't exist anywhere it doesn't exist any time and it's not made out of anything all you've told me is that it's a mind that's not instantiated by any kind of form, force, entity, or anything else, but it somehow has will, and all things in reality are contingent upon it. Uh, with the exception of that last bit, everything else that you described also matches the same set of stuff or the categories of things that don't exist. So you, you basically, all you've done, and he actually, I think Doug actually says this, all you've done is basically define what God's not. But when these guys get into this whole crap with global and local atheism, the reason that that global, that globo God, as I'll call him, that one works because it comes from Christianity. That's the only concept of God that works, according to J. Robin and Darth Dawkins, that can work because it comes from, it's the God of the Bible. All other God concepts are derivative. I mean, That's this global, one. this is just like a, an attempt to get the atheist to to have some kind of burden though i mean when i say atheist i just mean the person who's a non-theist or whatever right there's i mean i don't know what every person's using the word as but point is they want to go on the offensive but if they don't really have something that they're hard committed to then they lose most of their script so the first thing on the itinerary is to get them to have some kind of a burden yeah, which they've started doing anyway, right? Because they, 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 and that's what I think is weird. The world that they inhabit in now is they're trying to make it so they're, they're, they're positing this as like, look, the rational position is one that assumes that God is just real by default. Now, you crazy, you show up here and tell me why it is the case that that thing is impossible. And don't come at me with, you don't like the Quran or you don't like the Bible or you don't like the Bhagavad Gita because that stuff's just local. You know, those are stations. I'm talking about the entire, uh, you're talking about frequencies on the radio. I'm talking about the nature of sound itself, man, or whatever. Um, that the, the, the big God, the super hippie God or whatever, that's the one, right? Okay, fine. But as soon as you start squeezing these guys, the only reason that that God can actually exist that way is because um, it created everything, uh, created a faulty man, and then created a redemption saga, which requires it to appear in human form to die for our sins. It creates a whole redemption arc saga that's necessary for its existence. If that's not there, it's not glorifying itself. And if it's not glorifying itself, it's not God. That glorification of itself is a key factor that they keep leaving out of their definition of God. So any of these guys that are talking to Jerry, you could you could go and say, you could say, yeah, you know what? I'm not inclined to think that this classical theism God exists. I'm just as inclined to think. Uh, that it doesn't right but let's say that it does now prove to me it's jesus and they can't do that and jay robin knows that yeah they don't like doing that no even though they say it could be other any other way they don't like doing that for some reason seems and like that something seems... i would lead with right and that's what they that's what they try to say but he gets into it he gets into a problem with this later because doug doug brings this up i think jay robin tries tries to uh, slap Doug's hand for going back into like Mormonism or, or Islam or something like that. And he says something that is really kind of just, just kind of explodes something that he and Enlighten and Matt Yester and Darth have been using for quite a while. 
Well, I have to step away for a few minutes, um, but I'll be right back. Okay. Do you want me to keep going? I can. I can. Yeah, keep going because there. yeah, that's fine. Okay. All right. Rational to to disregard. That's not what I said, and you know it. So, do you have a rational defense for the position that is global atheism, which is that? Yeah, atheism? I just told you. I when I read the Quran, I do not see reading the Quran is not reading the Quran. Islam uh, refuting Islamic uh, theology or refuting the Islamic religion would be uh, uh, you're trying to um, you're trying to defend a local atheist perspective. If you're trying to hone in and, and trying to particularly defeat Islam, but is there another God other than the? Then you are. Then you are. Then you are doing a local well, which god i actually think these guys may have this wrong um i'll pontificate here on this for a little bit just kind of go off on a tangent so the definition that i prefer is uh for atheism or at least the the, the distinctions is the is wide and narrow right in terms of like your beliefs so um a narrow atheist uh, a wide atheist would be somebody who would believe in um uh, who basically doesn't uh, agree in really any supernatural claims, right? They can entertain God concepts, but they don't think that they're actually real. And that's any of them. The Abrahamic God, God of classical theism, whatever, everything from the God of Spinoza all the way through to, you know, any pagan or tribal God you could, you could possibly find. Um, and then a narrow, the narrow atheist would be somebody that rejects more, the kind of God of classical theism or the Abrahamic gods, the God of Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. And, but they don't necessarily think that, that that concept of God, they think that that concept of God is not real. That's what they, they're inclined to not believe in. But they either remain agnostic or possibly open to the existence of other kinds of supernatural things or spirits or entities or whatever, or maybe even possibly other definitions of God just not this particular kind of god the kind of ase uh, and by ase i mean independent of anything else but itself existing in and of itself immaterial spaceless timeless mind that creates everything and everything is dependent upon um so i think that's a better definition of this 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 one where these guys go with global and local the way they're using this is not very clear to me if they were talking about why they'd be talking about somebody who Tend, tends not to believe in anything supernatural, which I think might might apply to Pine Creek. I think he's probably he would probably be willing to admit that. Um, a narrow atheist would be somebody like Skylar Fiction, right? He's inclined to think that maybe a definition of pantheism, if there is a being like a god, it's you know the the definition provided by pantheism for him is something that he's a little bit more. He might be more inclined to accept that than to accept the God of classical theism. As far as the God of classical theism goes, no, he's, he's, he doesn't believe that, or he's inclined to think maybe, you know, maybe based on its properties, it's not possible. Um, J. Robin is doing this thing with this part where he's like, okay, look, I don't want you going after Islam or Mormonism or, or you know, even Christianity, probably. Like, although I don't know if he'd be correcting Doug as he'd be as apt to do this if Doug just went after the Bible directly. But um, I suspect that if Doug had picked the Bible, New Testament or Old Testament, J. Robin would be like, hey, we're not talking about the, he'd pull a Darth. We're not talking about the Bible yet. We're not talking about Jesus yet. We're just talking about the existence of a God. Yeah, well, right? I'd be happy to talk about Jesus. But first, Right. And first right. never comes. Yep. You know, it's exactly. funny because they get really, really mad because um, they don't like to do evidential arguments. And Dar says something like, you shouldn't do it because anything that you come up with, the atheist is just going to say, uh, uh, uh. And he does this sort of like, you know, Jurassic part, um, Ned, you know, uh, 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 I forgot to say the magic word routine. And, <laughs> yeah. and that's really just all they're doing when they say God does not exist because, right. And, and the only thing that'll satisfy them, the question, is some sort of, you know, impossible contradiction that you come up with with a mind. Stupid. Yeah, 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 and yeah. I just, I maybe one of these days I'll think because the yeah. Getting back to that kind of my the point that I was rambling on with, I'm not. How do you think they're using the the global versus local atheism global means um any god 
does not exist. Period. And then okay, local so the means wide. like local means concept A does not exist. Got concept B like you know on and on and on and on like your specific gods are being eliminated as being viable but the global atheist not only says all those gods i mean this is the way they use it not only means that all those gods are not viable but a god can't be right yeah okay yeah so they're basically yeah they're trying to say global is wide and local is narrow so yeah just no god exists well, period no god exists period well, so any any pointing to like anything specific wouldn't get you to no gods exist period right you could eliminate all you want but unless you eliminate all of them and i don't even know how you know that i mean it's just it's a fool's errand mm -hmm. all right here we go here's not a local atheist position you're a global atheist right perhaps i'll ask i'll ask the question a different way okay how does it follow that what is fundamental is got doug didn't answer the question yeah, of all that, I was going to say something there. I wasn't going to pause it again for it. But yeah, it's like, okay, he's been pretty, um, he's gotten a, kind of peeved when he's asked a question and he hasn't gotten a direct answer from Doug. And in that case, he didn't even wait for Doug to finish it and just moved on. Because he didn't want him to answer the question. Because yeah. he, wants well, to, he wants the global atheist thing, to, he wants to proceed along those lines. Yeah. And so now he started, what was the question he just asked again? Are you global atheist? Then some, I don't know. I don't want to go back that far. Where are we at? And trying to particularly defeat Islam. But is there another God other than the... Then you are, then you are, then you are doing a local atheist. Well, which God? You're taking you're... out a local atheist position. You're a global atheist, right? Perhaps I'll ask, I'll ask the question a different way. Okay. How does it follow that what is fundamental is not a mind? Okay, because God typically just denotes, uh, in a general sense, that which is ultimate and to mind. Wait a so minute. So how does it follow? How does it follow? That hey, the... Robin, do you just want to... I'm actually really willing to have a serious conversation with you if you're allowed to let me talk a little bit. This is my show, by the way. <laughs> Are you willing to do that? You know what he's... I, I didn't pick this up the first time, but he said... He said... He was talking about the Muslim gun, and he said, Oh, is there other gods? See, Pine Creek is Pine Creek. Pine Creek is a few moves ahead of Jay Robin right now, right? He knows exactly what he's doing, right? And usually, when Pine Creek says something like "Oh, I'm irrational" or something like "Oh, are there other gods?" Of course, he knows that there's other gods, right? He's trying to induce Jay Robin to saying something like "Yeah, there's the Christian God," and then like they can now Pine Creek has successfully gotten him off this like script, right? So yeah. Pine Creek knows what he's doing, right? And and any kind of hollow victory that he that J. Robin thinks he might get from Pine Creek saying something like, oh, I'm irrational. Well, that's not really any victory to speak of because anybody with any sense knows exactly what's happening here. Yeah, yeah. They know what they know what he's doing. And you know, the that that's the sad thing about it. Like if you're charitable, then you know, okay, J. Robin knows what pine creek was doing when he first started that but you start losing that charity the more he just keeps beating this dead horse that's like okay now you deserve what you get like you're just dragging that down and this 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 isn't going to end well for you although it does go in a, a different a very different direction though than i thought and the way the way that he he kind of wraps things up is pretty good doug not jay robin that's but, why that's why i'm, I'm, I'm robin very, can you answer robin robin so Sorry. how does it follow that what is fundamental? Robin, let's mind? practice answering questions. Doug, how does it follow no, that? They don't do this. I mean, they don't do this. It seems like you need that practice yeah. more than anything because you... What's that? They don't do the whole practice. They don't do any type of thing like that. They don't want to be committed to anything, right? Yeah. Any setup where you say, okay, if I answer this question, will you then answer that question? They will never respond to things like that because they don't want to be committed to not doing this just repeating the question bludgeoning them over and over some sort of sense of etiquette anything like they don't want to commit themselves to anything like that so you can't even negotiate with them on how the conversation pl conversation plays out no yeah and it's it's kind of sad too because it's like <laughs> i mean 
I want, if Jay Robin's watching this, if he's listening to this, observe how even because I'm sure Jay Robin thinks that Pine Creek is a snake and he's duplicitous because of the Satan and stuff. Um, but observe how much time Jay Robin was able to go off on his his, his right. enemy Pine Creek right. versus versus the amount of time Darth Dawkins gives any of his. Exactly. So after this, after this, I have I was listening to Jay Ramon Clubhouse, and he said, "Pine Creek did not want to have a conversation." You you just heard Pine Creek say it. He says, "I want to have a conversation. Let let Jay Robin finish." Right. He's trying to lay out some rules and something that's fair. It's like, can you answer this question? Blah blah blah. But you'll hear Pine Creek say say this over and over. I really want to have a conversation. He's like forced to, to mute Jay Robin. I mean, he just won't stop talking, right? And Jay Robin then has the gall to go and say, "Yeah, Pine Creek didn't want to have a conversation. He's the one who wants to have a conversation, not you, Jay Robin." Yeah. Yep. Can you answer one question for me? And it's a very simple. I'm waiting. One. I'm waiting for. I'm waiting for a, a legitimate response. You just gave me a BS answer. So how does it follow? That? Let's what practice answering. Let's practice being quiet and answering the question. Okay. And then we'll take can turns. We practice being, can we practice being non-invasive and, and being rational? Because it seems like you don't have enough practice with that, even though you're doing the live show. So are, do you me. live in the United States? Let's just practice. Let's just, let's. Pref- Doug, we're not going to, we're not, I'm not going to let you shift. I'm not going to let you shift talk at topic. So it seems like you're very afraid of your own position. That's what it sounds like it is because you're talking about the United I'm States. I'm willing to I'm give you anything you, you want. You, when I'm asking you specifically about. I'm ideas. afraid. Okay. Well, it sounds like that. I mean, the whole topic okay. of the show is, is fear, and it sounds like I mean, it's the, the I really do want to have a conversation. The irony, with you. the irony of the situation is that you're completely Robin. Afraid. I really, I really do want to have a conversation with you because I love precepts, but you got to at least allow me to answer a question or two, and then ask a question of you as well, and have you the opportunity to answer. Is that okay? Can we do that? Okay, so how does it how does it follow that what is fundamental is not a mind? <laughs> so I don't really know, don't. Understand he's that. opposed to answering any question that'll set any kind of ground rules. If, etiquette, even just a even just yeah. a conversational one, just to be friendly. That's all he had to do. There is oh, okay, all right. Like, Garth but he's not going to. Yeah, he's not going to take it down a step because if he if you concede anything, well, that's you're just that's just too much weakness. And this this and this this is what looks really bad for him because. Um, I mean, uh, Doug has conceded to being irrational. He's conceded to um, being inconsistent. He's conceded to being even afraid. And he's in a hell of a stronger position and is coming across a hell of a lot more confidently than Jay Robin is. And Jay Robin is playing like this, like, <laughs> like he's, he's like the angriest. I, I don't know what, what this is. It's just some kind of fucked up Christian apologist virtue signaling or something. Like he's, It's like he came on here to get some kind of badge. Or merit, you know, a merit badge or something, to, you know, from the troop. Question: How does it follow? What's your justification that 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 what is fundamental to all of reality is either not a mind or that there is no fundamental to, to all of reality? I still what's don't your, understand that question. I still so you don't, don't know what a just you don't know what a justification is. No, I don't understand your question. Justification is. He's been doing this a lot. This was something. This is a little little bit of a tip especially if anybody like ends up talking to Jay Robin on clubhouse could notice what happened there. So he's like, I don't know. I don't understand what that means. I don't understand what your question is. And Jay Robin, Oh, you don't understand what justification is. That's not what Doug said. Mm-hmm, Didn't understand yeah. the question. And Jay Robin is going to make this about uh, pine Creek playing Doug dumb about the definition of the word justification. And that's not at all what he's doing. And, and Jay Robin, like he, he loops around on this a couple of times. What is your what is your use uh, different words? Your, your rational. I just did. I gave you. I used the word justification for the first time just now. So you don't know what a justification is, a logical justification. Yeah. For a claim. I, I good. So that. good. So you know what that is. So then yeah. why are you pretending like you don't know? He didn't pretend like he didn't know what a justification was. He said he didn't understand the question you asked. Right. But if Jay Robin actually listened at least as much as he talked, he would have caught that. But he's on here to sermonize at at on Pine Creek's channel for points. I'm I'm really hoping the reach around from Darth is great, um, but my guess is it's not. So what is your what is your logical justification or your defense or how how does it rationally follow that, that what is fundamental is not a mind? 
What is fun? And what do you mean by mind? <laughs> a mind just denotes that, you know, something's conscious okay. and there are peripheral values like agency and intelligence. But um, yeah, that's typically what we mean when we say mind. Okay. So how does it follow that what is fundamental is not a mind? Is this cup fundamental? Do you have a serious answer to my question? No, this is a serious answer to the question. No, is this cup question. fundamental? No, you, you can't answer a question with a question. This, what, how does cup, it follow? this cup is not how a mind. Follow? I am how justified to think that, that this... what is fundamental is hey. not a mind. Okay, are you gonna, give me at least ten seconds. Is that fair? You're talking about cups and pots and pans. I don't want to hear about your your silverware or your or your, or your you know your, your dinner. Okay, well, how could? Da, 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 da. It, it'd be a hell of a lot more productive conversation if you keep him from just stammering through everything. I mean, this kid is trying to like talk faster than his brain's going. It's pretty clear his brain's not moving that quick. Dog, dog. Okay, 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 dog. Answer the question. I said, 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 I'm like, do you really think that's going to win you points? Like, like at that point, you don't know if like, are you trying to push my buttons? Or are you just a fucking idiot? I, I not that it matters. Cause I mean, the existence of fucking idiots tends to push my buttons. So yeah. Can I answer your question? I want to know. Give me an example. I want to know, know how does it follow that? Therefore there is no God. I see you're laughing on, on screen right now. This is a big joke to you. I understand. That. Yeah, you shouldn't. You shouldn't be the one. You shouldn't be the one. I'm having fun, and I want you, you to have fun as well. well. I mean, honestly, it sounds like <laughs> it sounds like you're 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 being you're you know you're flip flopping, you're floundering, because it doesn't sound like. Does it? Like, I remember watching this at the beginning, kind of wondering where. I I, I had no concern as to what whether or not Doug was going to come out looking all right because it was like J J Robin's not. He's not even good at conversation, so he's not. I don't think he's going to win in this battle of wits. But I didn't really know exactly how this was going to go. And when it got to this point, and, and J. Rob was like, "No, I think you're you're flip flopping and floundering." I'm like, "Yeah, then how come it doesn't seem like that?" Like, <laughs> Doug seems Doug sounds more consistent in everything that he said, even after admitting to obvious contradictory statements. And J. Robin. Um, Sounds like he's shooting blanks. J. Robin doesn't really know what to do right now. Yeah. He's trying to get back on script. He's really trying hard. And I'm wondering what what inspired him to take a run at him. It must have just been the top. It must have just been the the title. Because that's what he brought up. Your title says that theists are scurred. So he's like, I'll show him I'm not scurred. (laughs) That's the only thing I could think of. Like you have a rational defense for your position. What would count as a rational defense of my position? You don't know. Rash- Good you question. Know that's rational. going to advance the no, conversation. Being, why, did, why did you say you're being rational? Hey, what's that? I said, that's <laughs> a great question, right? That's that's yeah. a question. If answered, they can proceed and advance the conversation. But Jay Robin don't want to do that. Nope. Robin, I really do want to have a conversation with you because you got at least like you just said you shouldn't answer a question with a question. And that's exactly what you just did. So let's both try to work together, okay? So what would be an answer that I could give to your question? How does it follow that what is fundamental? No, 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 no. You're doing it again. I just asked you a question, and I would love for you to answer it. So ask that question to yourself. and then I like it. Anytime you see that orange around there, he's still talking. Right. So Jay Robin is in full Darth Hawkins mode. Like he <laughs> mute him. Now, granted, he doesn't know that he's being muted, but he does hear he does hear the host of the show that he called into talking to him and he just refuses to give up until he really, until, I mean, it, it seems to me like the only time he'll actually give up is when he realizes, Oh, I'm not, I, I, you know, he muted me. I don't know with this whereby program, if they can see that they've been turned off. I think they can on their side of things, but you know, he's, I don't, my guess is that Jay Robin like snorted a bunch of instant coffee and then, you know, went at him. And answer it. Answer the question you just asked from your perspective. Yeah, Doug, I'm not going to play your game. How does it follow that? What is fundamental so, in mind? So, well, what about that question? Implied a game. I, I really don't get that. <laughs> you're allowed to ask me questions, and I'm not allowed to ask you questions. No, you're deliberately trying to evade. That's that's why I can I can sense it easily. So I'm not no. gonna, I'm not going to let you. Evade. And I have to I have to pause you. I have to mute you each time in order to talk. But 
when you asked that question, I said, I don't understand the question. So you elaborate more. And then I said, talked about this cup. Now, this cup could represent fundamental reality in some way, at least part of it, right? Yet, I think both of us agree it doesn't have a mind. Now, what's the justification for that? We can use induction and say, well, what I, and we, I asked you to define mind, you didn't even do that. So I'm kind of stuck here. But what I perceive as a mind is some type of consciousness and so forth. And I think you and I agreed the cup doesn't have consciousness yet. I think both of us would say it exists. So I'm, my question to you is, give me an answer that you would say, yes, that's a good answer. Yeah, you still, you still haven't answered my question. I'm not going to answer your questions for you. I'm, you're, you're the one that needs to defend your own position. Why are you asking me to defend your position for you? You need to defend your own position. I know this is a little tactic that you try to think of to try to defeat you know, the, the line of reasoning that's been given to you, but you still haven't answered a single question that's been asked other than whether or not you're being rational. Line that, of reasoning. that you're contradicting yourself on. So now that we have an answer... You... He, never, he never even got him into a line of reasoning. He wouldn't let him go from the irrational part. I can, de I can define fundamental better than they can. And part of that re reason is only because um, they're actually not interested in clarity, right? They they live in this ambiguity, and they don't want to like hard to find words. But basically, by fundamental, from what I've gathered, I think this is pretty accurate. When they say what is what is it that's fundamental, uh, blah blah blah, they're just saying something like, what is the one thing uh that exists and without it nothing else would exist because it's dependent on that thing that's all they mean and if you have a god and you take away god nothing is left right because everything is dependent on god that cup that doug has if god doesn't exist goes away it doesn't exist if the cup goes away god is still there right because god's fundamental it's easy you would think they would have refined this script to where it's easily understandable by people, but no. Yeah. Yeah, I... I uh... Yeah, I, that's... Yeah, yeah, you got it. So I'm not, I'm not going to belabor that. Let's just move forward. If you believe you're being rational, how does it follow logically that there is no God? I, I said, well... When I read the Book of Mormon, and that uh, uh -oh. okay, so first you're talking about Islam, now you're talking about Mormonism. Well, you didn't accept. This, you this didn't is accept. A, this, is a bait switch, this is a bait and switch because you're you're trying to defend local atheism, not global atheism. How does no? How does I am global defending atheism, global atheism. No, no, you're trying to defend local atheism because you're talking about particular gods. But we have all to I'm go. Talk, all I'm yeah. asking, all I'm asking about is gen the general conception of God, which is that what is fundamental. Dog. And that's see, I don't like the way they're doing this because they're like, oh, this is just a general conception of God. So is pantheism, this or or like the God of Spinoza. The the one that they're kind they're kind of leaning into is the God of classical theism. Um, and even then, they're not entirely. I don't know that these guys are all entirely on the same page because one of the I think one of the properties usually assigned with the God of classical theism is is divine simplicity, which. I don't know if all of them are cool with, and that that's a long pedantic thing, and I, I'm not going to bore the audience with any of that, any of that stuff. But uh, but yeah, this that that notion, like oh well, this is just a general. Well, someone could define pantheism in a lot of the same ways, and pantheism does share some of the same kind of properties that the, the kind of pantheistic entity that you end up talking about, God as a universe or whatever, has a lot of the same properties as a god of classical theism. So. Um, that's one of the things that makes it so frustratingly vague. What Jay Robin and crew have whittled this down to, and they're trying to do, they're like, I want you to tell me, and, and this is and this is actually fairly fairly easy to do, because um, Doug started off this whole thing with um, with an understanding that if Jay Robin's consistent in his worldview, then Jay Robin's not going to think that anything Doug says is rational, right? And he kind of I think he kind of tripped him up with that, which is what made Jay Robbins so desperate to cling to that. Oh, you admitted to being an irrational, and he thought he thought he had a weakness to run with. But at this point, you could you could basically just do and and Pine Creek's already admitted to this. You could say, okay, yeah, like you're asking me to accept the idea of an immaterial, spaceless, timeless uh, mind, 
uh, that's the foundation for all of reality. Okay. I'm like, oh, okay, so you don't have a problem believing that. Yeah, no, no, I don't. Tell me, then you ask Jay Robin, why did it have to become human and die for my sins? It's not going to be an argument for that, but um, about this rationality thing, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but I'll just say it again, maybe it's for the newcomers, but um, it, it'll be funny because they define incoherent. I've heard them define incoherent. And like, usually when we hear the word incoherent, we think of something like, oh, whatever's being discussed, you're saying so X is incoherent. That means X has some sort of a contradiction, right? Um. But then I've heard them define, Darth in particular, define incoherent as not conforming to the mind of God. Right. right. Yeah. So when he's saying like Which is, hey, isn't that the hey, same isn't that the same as being a lie? Uh truth well, of a, that li a lie doesn't lie. Well, I don't know, but the point is that when you say that atheism is incoherent. And atheist and incoherent just means doesn't conform to the mind of God, right? Like atheism is false, and like it's it doesn't. You you're just basically saying that atheism is not theism, right? Atheism doesn't conform to the mind of God. That's all he's saying. Yeah. And, and the weird thing is, is that, you know, when these guys do this kind of stuff, they're like, well, that doesn't, you know, it, it, we have the capacity to be irrational, right? But irrationality is that which does not conform to the mind of God. And yet everything that exists is contingent upon that God and is sustained by that same God, which actually gets them into a lot more trouble. I, at least theologically. Philosophically, I don't know so much, but theologically, I think it, it causes problems. Um, but they tend to believe that not all this stuff comes from God. And it's, I'm like, okay, well, if this is why I think Calvinists have this, actually have a stronger stance here in terms of theology um, when they make these claims like there are some people that are destined for the fire, some, some are purpose built for destruction, right? Like, okay, that's, that's consistent if, if this God knows all and has designed everything is the creator of everything and sustainer of it than every every one that is behaving in a particular way. I mean, the, the problem with Calvinism is that it, it entails and can lead to lots of problems that are inherent with determinism, uh, which is uh, off, a lot of those problems are problems that most Calvinists themselves would rather avoid. Um, but they will at least acknowledge like, no, 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 that kind of like your ability to lie, your ability to be irrational, sin, all this kind of, all of this stuff is, you know, yeah, it exists. They'd acknowledge it in some cases. It, not, not many Calvinists it will say that evil is dependent on God, but all of this stuff ultimately is dependent upon God's plan because it's about glorifying him. So, yeah, that definition that, you know, irrationality is just, well, it's whatever doesn't conform to the mind of God. I'm like, well, everything in this reality has to conform to the mind of God, otherwise it can't exist. Yeah, it's almost like you're saying, okay, do you admit that your atheism is irrational? And by that he just means, do you admit that your atheism is not theism? Isn't it, doesn't that sound weird? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's sort of, it's like, okay, yeah, sure, I'll admit that. Like, well, your atheism doesn't conform to the mind of God. Bingo. Yeah, oh, it does. You know what else doesn't conform to the mind of God? My belief that there is no such thing as the mind of God, So, which is atheistic, and yeah, you're right. So now, you know, like, well, that can't be true. Like, all right. So uh, what I think is odd, uh, given that, like, you know, he's, he's just super excited that at the beginning that Doug admitted to being irrational. It's like you guys have spent years having arguments with people online where you tell them they're irrational from the jump because they're not Christian. They'll even tell some other Christians, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you're a Catholic. No, that's not. You're only halfway there. Ugh. It's fucking frustrating. The creator of all things is a mind. That's the general conception. So now you're talking about different properties, okay. and extended properties of God. Okay. But that's not relevant to the, what I'm asking you. You're not answering what I'm asking you. So okay, you okay, Robin, I'll, I'll seriously try to answer your question here. But you got to, instead of this making this a battle between atheists and theists, let's just be human beings here for a second, okay? Uh oh. Now, if you're talking about a global mind, 
I do not think you can falsify that. But in the same token, I would say that I don't think there's easy, uh, a good reason to believe it exists. But if you're asking me to falsify it, I don't think it's even possible. Yeah, right. I, I told you I didn't think that. Get, having this idea of. Right. I said I don't think Pine Creek is going to sign off on that. Almost no mm -hmm. no people that use the word atheist are going to sign off on that. Right. And that's and that's sort of the trick. I mean, like you mentioned that you know when they when they phrase their question that way, like there's a big difference between saying like, you asked me. It sounded like you asked me what my reasons are for not believing um or for or for having a positive belief in a negative however they want to put it but you're asking me for my reasons for my stance on something you asked me for my worldview and now you're telling me like no 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 you have to you have to falsify that you have to substantiate it with a lot with with an argument like you didn't ask me for an argument you asked me for my reasons why why do you believe these things and i what told you thought, you, but I'm sticking. I, and like I said, I mean, I, I, you've probably seen it, but it was it was from like a year or two ago. I I reviewed it on my channel, but it was a it was a video. Um, I don't know if you were on it. I think it might have been asked. Maybe I didn't review it. It, may, it might have been ask yourself and Alex Malpass talking with Darth Hawkins. And Darth asks him a question about that, and he tries to pin him on that. He basically, oh, well, he tries to say, oh, you don't believe in the claims from the Bible. That's just an argument from incredulity. And the, the whole point of that is like the, the argument from incredulity fallacy when somebody points it out, it's, it's potentially there's potentially something there, but not really. Like generally what would happen is like if somebody if a Christian does the whole thing like, you know, I had a Christian do this to me at work years ago, asked me if I was a believer. And I was like, no. And the, literally said she said, well, how is there all this stuff? basic argument you know you know an appeal to incredulity right it was we have this grand philosophical question why is there something rather than nothing there's something how could that possibly be without a god and specifically without the god i happen to worship and, and think is the real one right but when these guys are like okay so if an atheist is like yeah i'm not convinced of the claims well that's just an argument from incredulity no it's not you're raising that to a level that's like are, if you're asking me, can you con like? I'm not saying I cannot conceive of a being that does these things, uh, a, an immaterial, uh, a spaceless, timeless, uh, immaterial mind. Okay, let's say that I can hypothetically as assume that that's real. My issue with it isn't that I can't imagine it, and therefore, out of incredulity, I'm denying it just out of hand. No, my problem with that definition is that definition also happens to match definitions of a bunch of other things that aren't real and that's not that's not controversial because there are plenty of christians that don't believe in ghosts and ghosts tend to fit that definition they don't exactly exist in a space or a time they're not specifically material they might be minds so the definition that i'm being given is of a super ghost a ghost that can build stuff, the Minecraft ghost or something. I don't know what you'd want to call it. Uh, oh, any thoughts there? I probably no. rambled too long. Okay. Some nebulous god with who whose only attributes is it has a bodiless mind or something like that. I don't think you can falsify that. So could this god exist? Yes. But I still think I can call myself an atheist to say that there's no good reason to believe that that God exists. Now, I had you on mute for a reason, because otherwise I couldn't get that out. Okay, you're unmuted. Yeah, athe atheism is the, it's the position that what is fundamental is not a mind. It's a denial of, of God as defied. So you're telling me you cannot defend your position rationally? You said it's not falsifiable? Right. Okay. It's a denial of God as defined. Um, not, not, not entirely. I mean, I know people get jerked out of shape about definitions of atheism and stuff like that, but I don't have a problem with people sort of, not, I mean, they call it the lactase position, but to me, it's just the, the psychological definition, right? Like, are you psychologically inclined to believe in a God or not? Um, and if they're like, no, not really inclined to believe that it's true, they might not have good reasons for it. They might not have thought about any of the philosophical arguments for it. They've just heard some presentations or maybe some stories from the Bible or some other things. 
they're not inclined to think that that's true. And um, this it gets interesting here because I think for most people, I'll be interesting to uh, I'll be asking Tom about this in a minute. They'll, they'll get into this. I think it's coming up right up. Okay, so then you're so then you are irrational. Okay. So then why? So now you've now you flipped out three times. No, no, it, they just got back to where Doug. <laughs> I love this. He's accusing him of flip-flopping a third time, and they've gotten back to where Doug was trying to lead him. Doug's been trying to tell him, no, from your position, I'm irrational from the start. And and Robin is now, oh, well, you flip-flopped again. I'm like, Jesus, this kid is dense. Position. So no. first, said you're irrational. I agreed, Robin, I agreed with you because there's no way I can convince you otherwise, so I'm not even going to try. Like, it's a hopeless case, right? By the way, you're muted right now, so nobody can hear you, and I will unmute you. But the reason why I ask that question, how would I even unfalsify uh, falsify that claim? Like, well, let's work together. How would we do that? This creator God with an uh, immaterial mind of some sort, how would an atheist falsify that claim? Okay. I, I need to respond to what you're saying. And if you don't it's let me respond to the thing, then we cannot have a conversation, which is so, I mean, apparently that's, you want to have a conversation. Okay, so let's have a conversation. Okay. I'm gonna respond, I want to respond to what you said. So you told me that first thing you said was that you're being irrational. Then you told me you are being rational and now you're saying you're being irrational again. So that sounds like a lot of irrationality to me if you're being contradictory so many times. Maybe you should, maybe you should do a little bit of uh, soul searching before you come <laughs> back to live again because this is embarrassing for you, okay? How do you, so so if your position is around. I like how he's arrogant enough to tell him how he's supposed to run his channel. With, like, uh, just try really to think? manipulate him to like, you know. Yeah, this, like, like any of this is going to have an effect on him. Like this dude period at his lowest gets like in the low 300s during his, li during just live views. Granted, some of that are people just like, some of those are Christians looking to, you know, spot a weakness or something. But still, he gets a lot of views. And uh, yeah. I don't, J, does Jay Robin even have a YouTube channel? Is he keeping up? Does he? Not that I know of. He just does the Discord and Clubhouse thing, right? Yeah, pretty much. So, yeah. Rational. Your position is irrational. The second thing you said was that you'd find it difficult to have a reason to believe in God. As you said, you, you find it difficult to have a reason to believe in God. But that doesn't make any sense because your reason is arbitrary. So your second criteria of belief has been completely, um, it, doesn't, it doesn't make any sense to say what you just said because you're being arbitrary in your reasoning. You're not being rational. So you've defeated your own second line of reasoning with your first line of reasoning. Okay. Are you done? So do you have, any, do you have anything that's consistent that, that, can, that we can work on moving forward that, that you can defend or that you can present you know, as, as a consistent, uh, intelligible representation of your position? Yeah, I, I let you talk for about a minute there. You agreed? Fair? Is that fair? Yeah, I'd like an answer to the question. Okay, state your question again, and then I'll I'll take less time. So you, the, you, you said you said two things. The first thing you said was that you cannot falsify God, means that you don't have a rational defense for your position. But then the second thing you said was that uh, you want those are not the same thing. Uh, that was that I I didn't notice that the first time I watched it. Did he just kind of sl sleaze those together? I missed it. I was reading the comments. I think he said like you ad you admitted that you can't falsify God, therefore you don't have a rational expl you don't have a rational basis for your non-belief. I think that's what he just said. Let me let me wind uh, it back. yeah, but but rational just means like he by that he just means some sort of deductive argument, you know. Necessarily Maybe. the yeah. case. Let me so, take it back and say yeah. But that doesn't make any sense because your reason is arbitrary. So your second criteria of belief has been completely um it doesn't it doesn't make any sense to say what you just said because you're being arbitrary in your reasoning you're not being rational so you've defeated your own second line of reasoning with your first line of reasoning okay are you done so do you have any do you have anything that's consistent that that can we that we can work on moving forward that that you can defend or that you can present you know as a, as a consistent uh, intelligible representation of your position yeah, I, I let you talk for about a minute there. You agreed? Fair? Is that fair? Yeah, I'd like an answer to the question. Okay, state your question again, and then I'll I'll take less time. So you, the, you, you said you said two things. The first thing you said was that you cannot falsify God, means that you don't have a rational defense for your position. Yeah. 
You can't falsify God, therefore you don't have a rational defense for your position. That's not what that means. Or did he say you can't falsify God, comma, you don't have a rational grounds for your position? I think he said so. Okay. If you hit left or right arrow, it should go back and forward, I think, five seconds. Is that helpful? Uh, it doesn't show up for me. I don't know why, but I'm on, I'm on a laptop. I don't mm -hmm. I don't get the quick five seconds back. Do you have any Do you have anything that's consistent that that can we that we can work on moving forward that that you can defend or that you can present, you know, as as a consistent, uh, if, intelligible representation of your position? Yeah, I, I let you talk for about a minute there. You agreed? Fair? Is that fair? Yeah, I'd like an answer to the question. Okay, state your question again, and then I'll I'll take less time. So that you you said you said two things. The first thing you said was that you cannot falsify God. You say you don't have a rational defense for your position. But then the second thing you said was that uh, you wanted. Yeah, he just equated. He equated you can't falsify God, therefore you don't have a rational defense for your position. Like he thinks that's what what how Darth or how Pine Creek is making that connection. Right, and so if you. <clears throat> If you remember the very beginning of the stream, what did Pine Creek ask that would have been helpful in this situation? What do you mean by rational, right? And what and what half an hour later it turns out there's they seem to be talking past each other because they're using rational in different ways. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, but yeah, that that idea that because Doug had already laid that out, like you know, he's trying to say, like, I'm not inclined to believe in this. I don't, I don't see a reason why, you know, to believe in this. But if you're asking me to falsify it, you know, I can't do that. I can't falsify this particular thing as defined. And so J. Robin's like, okay, well, you said two things. You said you can't falsify it, and then you don't have a, and then he, he's blending that together because the and and then, uh, you know, that's this is all part one. Um, you don't have a rational basis for your disbelief. And now he's going to move on to the second one. Or you didn't, you couldn't find a reason to believe in God. But if your position is irrational on the onset, if you understand that, then then your second line of reasoning gets destroyed by your first line of reasoning because your, your, your what? rationality does, it is, there's no rationality to the claim that you're making or to the position that you're staking out because you're being arbitrary with your reasoning. You're, you're def that, that doesn't make any sense at all, what he just said. Feeding your own standard of belief when you're applying one thing to the other when you're when you're applying your standard of belief to one to one um to one worldview meaning the god worldview okay you know what maybe maybe standard. you're right maybe you're right maybe i need to rethink uh, so what do i do now i mean i'm mean, getting this right you're, you are you do believe that you're being irrational well i'm saying maybe you're right that i am irrational what do i do now okay so then so then you should be so then you would accept them the christian worldview as true well, how do we go from God to Christian Christianity? Well, you're being arbitrary, so it, it wouldn't matter anyways, right? So why don't you be a Christian right well, now? Well, it mattered when I brought right up now. Islam. You said, no, no, no. Okay. No, so, no, no, no. That's not, that's not what we're talking about. I was asking for your rational defense, but we just we established. Okay, so we maybe I am irrational. What so, do I do so, now? So, stop, so what is not, so then accept Christianity? It shouldn't be hard if you're being irrational, you're being arbitrary. Yeah, this, yeah, this is odd. He just started. Anyways, okay, so okay. Just, okay. Just Robin, very, very good. You said, okay, may, I'm irrational. I should accept Christianity, right? No, I'm just look. This is this is this is uh, baffling to me that you're being irrational. I'm just, I'm just using your own lo logic against you. So I granted it to if you. Being, if you're being if you're being right, so I'm just going to use it against you because you obviously. You and I, I, I'm asking for you your think, help. You think you're being rational? I don't. I don't really get this. Um, there wasn't a logical argument presented from Doug for which Jay Robin can use against him. He's just using Jay, he's just using Doug's claim that he was irrational, and then trying to extrapolate from that how he's going to be he's going to be wrong about stuff um, and not be able to get anything right. This doesn't make yeah. Any he's just sense. trying to he continually trying to weaponize it, right? Um, yeah, but and it doesn't make sense because he he would have gotten there anyway. Doug just, just beat him to that point. It's just weird because he he thinks it's. Like this horrible thing that he's got this atheism position that's irrational, right? It doesn't have good reasons for it, according to Jay Robin. And he's criticized and mocked Doug for that. 
but then wants him to take an irrational position of Christ of you know be I mean what? Yeah, this makes no sense. Yeah, this weird appeal, like, oh well, if you can just arrive at something irrationally, then you could you could arrive at Christianity irrationally too. You're you're dumb for uh, adopting positions irrationally. Uh, now I want you, now I want you to adopt a position irrationally. Right. Yeah, and it's That's weird dumb. because he he told him before, like, well, you don't have any self respect and you're not being an adult because you're being irrational. But now it's like, okay, well, if you're going to remain irrational. Well, can't you just be irrational for Jesus? Well, I would, I would, I would, I had asked the same question that Pine Creek asked him. Well, you tell me, you tell me if I'm being rational or not. But he gets into something here with the, the with um, uh, Islam that that's it's super cringe. No, but you're afraid of rationally defending it because you know you can't. So, listen, but listen, Robin, listen, I'm listen, asking listen, for I'm your help. Use, I'm just going to use what you said. You said you're being irrational and arbitrary. So then it should be no problem becoming Christian right now, right? Okay, well, how do I do that? Except the truth of Christianity. How do I do Except that? Except Christianity is true. You don't know how to believe something? No. Uh, how do you believe something? Do you know how to do that, Tom? To just make yourself believe something? Well, it's I, I don't I'm not a doxastic voluntarist, so I don't I don't think you can just decide to believe something. I think that right. you are convinced of things, you know, and then you believe them. But I don't know, yeah, I don't understand this. Yeah, it's like, oh, you could just accept it. I, I can just accept. Like, this is the thing that I find odd about this kind of stuff, because this, I think this kind of gets to, like, the, the aspect of Pascal's wager, right? Because people will end up kind of shorthanding Pascal's wager to this, like, yeah, it's kind of cynical because it's sort of a pragmatic, there's a pragmatism to it that's kind of ugly about it, right? But actually what he was kind of doing was, look, there's no way that you're going to know for certain, so you might as well just assume it as the case. Um in the hopes that you're going to benefit from it after you're dead. And I feel like if J. Robin understood Pascal's wager better, he might actually be able to present that to Doug in this case. But that's not what he's doing. He's not doing the whole kind of thing like, well, you know, if you stop and think about it, yeah, you may not be completely convinced of it in your heart, but if you're even 60 to 70%, you know, uh, leading in the direction that there's this being, that created everything and that it's actually going to condemn quite a bit of you. And if you believe in it and say that you love it and try to do what it says and all this other kind of stuff, follow its words and its prophets or whatever, you know, the, the, all the rules keep changing as time goes on, but that they don't care about that. But anyway, if you do that, you know, you can't really know it. it there's going to be lots of inconsistencies, but that's just part of being human. But hopefully when you die, you get the, you get the big prize at the end. But Jay Robbins like, J. Robin comes from a cult of Christianity that believes you have to you have to know it. It's the same. I mean, it's similar to the groups of Christians that I was in. They knew God was real. They didn't b believe it. They didn't think that God might be real. It wasn't a probability. It was a definite thing. They would claim to love God and acknowledge His existence. They talked about you know, you confessed God. He didn't theorize or you know hypothesize about him. So, what Jay Robin here is attempting somebody to do. This is the the thing I like the most about uh, the the mainstays of theology maintaining themselves in modern society. This thing that we know about the brain that is consistent with doxastic involuntarism, which tends to make doxastic involuntarism, I think, more objectively scientifically true than doxastic voluntarism, uh, is that you really can't choose your thoughts. You can't choose how convinced you are of certain things. You definitely can't choose how certain you are of things. It depends on the information you're exposed to, experiences, biases, wiring, etc. There's a whole, there's just bundles and bundles of things that go into that kind of stuff. But Jay Robin is acting like he's either never heard of that or doesn't really understand its weight. You can just choose to get it. Like you've solved a math, like... <sighs> This is like if you showed somebody how to do a math problem and you get to the right answer, right? You can tell that the kid that you showed does not understand the steps, doesn't understand what any of this means, can't comprehend the reasons why this was done. But you show them the answer and you're like, look, it's as plain as the nose on your face. Why can't you just accept it as the truth? Because they don't, they either don't understand it, 
or they didn't follow it or whatever. And that we're talking about something like math, something that can be clearly demonstrated with a beginning and an end that's true. Not in all cases of math, but I think everybody knows what I mean. J. Robin's acting like that with God. And that doesn't make any sense. I wouldn't treat math like this to somebody who was skeptical about what I had done with a math problem or some, some, you know, some equation or something like that. But J. Robin expects somebody to believe this about a deity that is as poorly defined as the God he's talking about. A, 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 a mind that is not made of anything, anywhere, at any time. Neat. Don't, what, what do exactly do I need to do and accept? Accept the, well, the Christian worldview, which is that God exists, that he is uh, foundational to all of reality, and that is the Christian God specifically, that, that is the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and that the Son is like, do I be paid the price for your sins. Okay, so in order to, for, I need to accept that Jesus Christ died and rose again, and that's it? That's the, that's the core, that's the foundation of Christianity, yes, it's called Christianity for a reason. Okay. It's about Christ, so yes. And how do how do I accept that that Jesus Christ died and rose again? How do you accept it? Because yeah, right a now, belief, a belief you, you simply accept. You choose not to rebel against against the knowledge that you that you have in God. God says that all people have been shown God's revelation. That you have a choice whether or not you're going to accept or reject it. You've obviously chosen to reject it. So just so to, to turn from that rejection to acceptance to but realize. I, but help me, that, like I to realize that you're in a state of of that God has, uh, I know, you'd Robin. Be, I, you'd be justly, you'd be justly punished for the sins that you've committed, and realizing that Jesus Christ is your only way out. I love how he was avoiding this kind of stuff, right? Like he didn't want to talk about Islam. That's local atheism. I don't want to talk about Mormonism. But now the Christian theology is pouring out of this kid like diarrhea. And it, well, that means that. Doug has succeeded. Yeah, he's got he's gotten him to talk about Christianity. Yep. Just so it's just not a hundred percent success. So. <laughs> okay, but uh, here, but you will be done punished. But this is what I need help from you because I truly, truly don't believe Jesus Christ rose from the dead. How do I choose to believe that? Well, I thought you're being you're being irrational and arbitrary, so this shouldn't be a, this should this shouldn't be a part for you. Just choose to believe the other thing. If you're being, you chose to believe what you do believe now off of no rational, off of no rational basis. So how do you? Wait a minute. You are you asking <laughs> me to be to choose that Jesus Christ rose from the dead for irrational reasons? No, that's not what I said. Yeah, it's exactly using, what you said. I'm using no, I said, that is what Jay Robin said. The funny thing is, if anyone, any, any of you go back and watch this. Um, if you if you watch the original video and watch the the comments going on in the live chat, I think one of them is from Floyd FP, and he kind of reacts the same way. And it's got like he's like actually shocked, like what the fuck is he? What <laughs> he wants you to he wants you to just accept Jesus for irrational reasons? Like, uh, okay. Said you've chosen to be irrational and to right. be and to be arbitrary with your reasoning when it comes to the not God position. So right. then there should be no reason why you're not a Christian. It should be easy for you to, to, to switch to the Christian position. Right. You said asking me, asking me, asking me all this, why this and the other, if you're being irrational, why should that matter? Of course, I do have reasons for being, being a Christian, but um, I, I'm addressing you on your own terms. You told me. <laughs> Doug didn't make an issue out of the irrationality. Jay Robin did. So and now Jay Robin is just a huge shit show right now. I mean, it's yeah, just, at this, at this so... point, Jay Robin has lost his own plot. Like, look, he didn't make an issue out of it being irrational, and he already explained it away to you. He already told Jay Robin the reason I said it was irrational is because that's your worldview is a precept. Your pre your your worldview is that anyone who doesn't start with the presupposition that Christ that that there is a God is irrational. That's why I answered that way. And then Jay Robbins still trying to hold him to like, well, you said you're irrational, so I'm just saying, like, well, if you, this still makes no sense. Like, d does he think that loony, that that insane people, people who like really irrational people, people who really cannot, cannot follow, you know, uh, you know, you know, a couple things at a time, cannot follow a train of thought, can be made to believe just anything? You can just walk up to a schizophrenic and tell him, like, you know what, Santa Claus is real. Believe me. Okay, we'll do. 
like I don't I don't get where Jay Robin's going with this. This is just really ignorant. You're being irrational. You told me you're being arbitrary. Right. So then right. I don't have to I don't have to give you any logical reasoning or anything. Like you can just believe in Christianity for 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 no reason. Why, why but are you asking problem? me to believe in Christianity for no reason? No, I'm I'm just addressing you on your own terms. So if okay, you're being irrational, if give you're being me a arbitrary, good okay. Hang on. If you're being irrational, Robin, and arbitrary, you, I really, you're... Robin, I really do want to have a conversation with you, but you're making it very difficult because you're just talking, talking, talking. At least we let's see. It's we could even have ten seconds of silence. It's fine. We can relax, chill out. But I. Are you you're not saying I should just accept Jesus Christ rose from the dead for irrational reasons, right? I don't think you're saying that. Are you saying that? Yeah, you know, you know what I'm saying, you know what you're saying. You know, this if you've been tracking the conversation, you know exactly what's going hates on. Hates clarity, me, hates clarity, hates it. Yeah, nope, nope, nope. Let's go back to the generalities. <laughs> should answer that rationality definition question in the beginning. You wouldn't be here, Jay Robin. <laughs> uh arbitrary if you're being if that is true if i'm just holding you to your own to your own claims Stand, here, standard okay? right right if that is true then it should be no problem with you just accepting christianity right now right okay being irrational okay but so, listen listen robin but listen to my that makes no sense like if that applied to if that applied then every literally everyone that they've always been talking to should just have no issue just accepting accepting god but the problem with this is that he's blowing up what he's been given by darth revelation is the basis for rationality he if he's irrational he can't decide that god is real because that means if he's truly irrational that means he's somehow been deprived of re of, of revelation special or general in a theological sense and that's not fucking possible the only thing that's theologically possible from the christian worldview especially like an evangelical like this guy is that he's denying the truth and unrighteousness which does not make one irrational paul doesn't say those people are irrational these guys have run with it and said oh well paul well, you get that right there right? and paul's basically saying these people are wrong from the jump so we can own them from the beginning like no read paul's letters again then get back to us and try to read the the letters that he actually wrote not you know he didn't he didn't write the pastoral epistles get it right but oh my god this is i mean this isn't just bad philosophically this is bad theologically this is just this all is around bad at this point yeah, but, and it's like, okay, if, and if you are trying to minister to a person, this is not ministering to people in good faith. If you get with an, if you're dealing with somebody like Pine Creek and you think that this person is truly insidious or something, that means you need to be more honest, more straightforward, more charitable, more gracious, more kind. You don't, you don't dick around with this stuff and then pretend like you're going to play like Billy Badass at like, and then, you know, oh, well, you know what, for you atheists, for this atheist, because he's going to be a hostile witness, the Jesus I'm going to present to him is going to be all stick, no carrot. That's not how you're supposed to fucking minister. Like, I'm not that far removed from my upbringing in the Christian church to know that is not how you fucking do things. This is exactly, and, and hopefully Jay Robin hears this. Jay Robin, this is exactly how you get people to, to run screaming from Christian churches. Please continue to behave this way, especially if you want to go to a church and be completely alone in the pew or just at the pulpit talking to the wind. No, these, all... these online soldier Christians, combat Christians, whatever you want to call them, they're like, you know drones and you know it's they're, they're like bees right there you got your queen you got your drones you got your warriors they all have their roles like people like j robin and darth they're combat christians they're soldiers right and these types of christians they don't go to church they don't they don't go to church i j robin's not going to church Pe people that act like this can't sit in a pew and listen to a preacher maybe get some things wrong they're not going to do that they're not they're not going to go fellowship with other christians they're not doing that gerald don't go to church i'd be surprised if he goes to church yeah i would i would i mean like you said if you said that if he's hanging out in clubhouse things and he gets to a point well maybe maybe he does maybe that's one of the reasons that triggers him he wants to be able to do this kind of shit in the church, church that he's at. But then again, I don't, I know nothing about Jay Robin. I don't know anything about his personal life. I don't know if he's single, married, gay, straight. Um, 
I think he's from the D. I think he's from DC. That's about the only thing I know about him. I don't know anything about him either. Yeah, but um, yeah, he. Um, I mean, all I know is that what he spent five months on and off, almost five months, um, wearing out his welcome on Skeptic Generation. And then apparently that wasn't enough for him. So now he, he came on here and um, I think Pine Creek might let him back on. Um, given the way the comments and stuff were going on his, his stream today, um, there was popular demand to have him back. <laughs> mm, I mean, Doug might talk to him again, but I'd be surprised if Doug is as patient with him like this again. I mean, Look, Doug was already expecting it to probably go something like this. And um, right, the, the, the fact that it played out and he had to mute him and all that stuff and he was trying really hard, you don't just keep doing that. You prove your point and, you, and you're now uh, licensed to say, hey, like, look, I gave him a chance. Look what happened. Right. You don't just keep doing it, though. Right. You don't. I mean, I I don't I don't see him interacting this long with Jay Robin again unless Jay Robin comes at it from the start very differently. Yeah, it calms down a little bit. Like it's like if you're gonna have this conversation, maybe do something about that raging boner in your pants that's making you nervous and super awkward. Um, apologies to the audience uh, if that's too gross, and apologies to my guest Tom Rabbit if that's a little bit too much. <laughs> nah, that's all right, man. I'm not clutching any pearls. <laughs> uh, but J. Robin may have been clutching at his pearls, if you know what I mean, during this conversation. Like, th there's something I don't know. There's something weird about the way he goes at these. Like, a, there's a, like a little bit of the S and M in this. Oh, you know what? You, I gotta before I forget. Yeah. Um, since, since there's a lot of viewers now, um, I was listening to them yesterday. These guys, right? They say that they're on here to save souls, and they say that. What does Dar say when he's when he gets caught, you know, laughing at someone dying or Madeline Murray O'Hare may her soul rot in hell because he likes the idea of that, right? I caught them the other day. They were J. Robin too. J. Robin was there, and someone brought up that Matt Matt Dillahunt is in the hospital and he's about to get heart surgery. He probably already had it. I don't know. Hopefully, it's okay. And J. Robin said, hey, 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 guys, we should pray for him, huh? 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 And they proceeded to mock and make fun and laugh at the fact that he could potentially die. Fun. Well, that's neat. Yeah, these, these are your Christians. This, this is the... Um, so I know they don't like the idea of atheist fruit inspectors, you know? But that's the that right there is why I'm, that was the stuff that um, lured me away from Christianity, because I know J. Robin wouldn't be satisfied with this because he wants to talk about global atheism, not not local atheism. But for me, Christianity, uh, a lot of what I thought was interesting about it was that this interaction you were supposed to be having with Jesus meant that uh, the Holy Spirit was going to work in your heart and make you a better person. And a lot of people that I think, and I think the way Christians talk about it, they make it entirely like the self-absorbed, self-involved kind of neurosis kind of thing, a spiritual neurosis, so that you don't pay attention to the fact that, or at least you lose track of the fact that everybody around you that's a Christian is supposed to be getting better. They're supposed to be becoming more gentle, more kind, patient, charitable. Basically, it's supposed to turn Ebenezer Scrooge into Ted Lasso, Right. The vast majority of Christians that I met never even came close to being like, uh, like even even as cool as like Elon Musk. At least as awkward, but they didn't get better. You know, they still drank, they still smoked. I don't consider those things bad, but they all did, and they all had this self-loathing about it. They were all super inconsistent about it. They were judgy of people that came in that were too poor, too black, or too out of town, or whatever. Like none of those kinds of tribal inconsistencies and none of the blind spots or whatever went away. And yet that was one of the things that you're supposed to be able to see, fruits of the spirit. And what did I see? I saw people, people who were Christians cheating on each other, getting divorces, just like anyone who, just like any non-believer. And sometimes it rates higher than that. And the, 
at one point, two different churches got things got so bad that these were adult human beings. I was a kid. I'm watching this. These were adults that could no longer have productive conversations with each other anymore because things had gotten so awkward between them about their concepts of God. They couldn't even have conversations about anything. They could have a, an awkward uh, kind of fraught conversation about the weather, local politics, uh, some, you know, that's it. Fucking weird. So when when I anytime somebody points out like Tom's like, OK, these guys were on there and they were basically having a mock prayer session, essentially praying that they, they hope they're wishing they are wishing more harm upon Matt Dillahunty. Um, that's consistent for me. Because there isn't a Holy Spirit to make them better. They just think there is. But in a lot of these guys' case, I don't know if you've noticed this, Tom, I don't think they give a fuck that there's a fruit, fruits of the Spirit kind of thing. Most of these guys have just latched onto the fact that because they've uh, solved the um, Dan Brown-like puzzle that is Christianity, that you know the, the Illuminati and the secret knowledge to everything is Je Jebus Christ, um, that they get a big pat on the back and a gold star and a guaranteed pass into heaven, no matter how big a dick they are. At least that's what it seems like to me. My question, you're muted right now, so nobody can hear you, but listen, and I can't hear you either. But listen to my question. You're saying, I want to say what you said to me. You're saying, well, Doug, you just chose to be... If, you were being irrational you just chose to be an atheist so now why, why can't you just choose to be a christian but i'm asking you a direct question now do you want me to become a christian for irrational reasons yes or no yeah you already know i've told you already the answer is no okay but I'm, I'm holding okay I'm no, asking you. no stop stop please please because I, I, I asked you a yes or no question which is very short so give me a little more time please so now i'm asking you okay if you're in your opinion i should not become a Christian for irrational reasons, I'm asking for your help. Sincerely, please give me a rational reason to believe in Christianity as opposed to, let's say, Islam or some other religion. Okay, so now, now Doug, now Doug, after what, almost, almost half an hour, now Doug, after almost half an hour, he's getting to a point where he's, he has orchestrated this conversation so now he's potentially gonna get Jay Robin to actually. Um, it's almost he's Jay Robin. If he falls for this, he's almost been like tricked, basically, right? Because Jay Robin doesn't. He doesn't want to be in a in a situation where he's saying, "Okay, here are the rational reasons for for why the Christian God is true," because then those are going to be subject to scrutiny, right? So Doug's now gotten to here. Does it work? Uh, I don't re I don't remember exactly what happens, but I'm I'm pretty sure there's further resistance. Yeah, there. <laughs> well, what I like here is that because um, now this opens it up. I thought maybe we had missed it, but there's a bit here that's coming up about Islam that I, I wanted to point out because um, and, and J. Rabin biffs it or reject that. Okay. You have a choice that you, that you can make. Now I'm asking you. Because because you have arbitrarily chosen to reject against God, this is not this shouldn't be hard for you to do. You just accept the revelation that's been. Actually, I thought he had already explained his reasons for not accepting God. He'd already told J. Robin that that he didn't see a reason to believe in the God, that God is defined, but said he couldn't falsify it. And now J. Robin is not getting that right, either on purpose or because he didn't hear him in the first in the first time. I'm presented to you. Now, are you ready? To okay, do that? okay, let's do that. Okay, let's do that. I accept the revelation that's been given to me. Now, someone up, comes up to me and says, Doug, why are you a Christian? What should I tell them? Uh, yeah, so now Doug clear. is having to orchestrate even more, right? Now, it, J. Robin caught on, right? So it's like, oh, so now it's like, it's like, I don't know, trying to do psychology on like a child or something right he's like okay so we're, we're it's not weird, actually, yeah. no you're not actually taught you know having to justify it no jay robin i have a friend and they're not christian so what should i say to them you know it's, it's just like the lengths that he's got to go to to get jay robin to even talk about christianity to yeah give arguments is just ridiculous what, what's interesting too is that jay robin has spent most almost all of his time talking about doug 
Right. I mean, he's been talking about Doug in relationship to, you know, the Christian God, but it's all about Doug and Doug's thinking and Doug's attitude and Doug's, Doug's deeds and all this other kind of stuff. It's, it's, um, I don't know if I were Pine Creek, I'd be kind of flattered. Okay. And they, and they asked me, why should I believe that revelation? What should I say then? Uh, you appeal to God's revelation. It's already, it's already been demonstrated to you. Now we look at the Christian worldview as, as but I'd be lying as a, Right. I love this. J. Robin knows how to repeat the phrase. Oh, you just appeal to revelation as it's been revealed to you. Doug brings up, well, I'd be lying because, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't, you know, I don't, I don't know that I have, but it has been revealed to me. I'm just saying that it is. As a worldview. No, you wouldn't be lying if you accept God's revelation. Now, you look at the Christian worldview wholesale. What is the, what is the worldview actually encompass? Okay. The Christian worldview has uh, God as, as that which is ultimate and everything else is the creation of God. And so uh, we look at who God is, namely that he's ultimate, that he's a mind, that he's eternal, fundamental right. to all of reality. But that uh, could apply to Islam. Omniscient, omniscient, omnipotent. No, he doesn't. Omniscient, omnipotent. Uh, all of these all of these qualities oh. that are necessary. My for, Muslim for friends human, believe that. For human intelligence. No, they, they couldn't. Uh, I'll explain to you why in a second, but they could. Um, not all of the properties. Some of them possibly, but not all of them. Hear that right there. Some of them, but not all of them. That's a bitch move right there. Because he and Tone, maybe not Tone, Tone's not smart enough to track this, uh, but definitely uh, that idiot Enlighten have been doing this thing where if you tell them those those three properties, right? Well, you know, I don't think that omniscience, omnipotence, and omnibenevolence, as you know, I don't, they, there's some contradictions between the three of those as properties in, the, in a thing, if you just want to use those ones. Or even if you just want to use omniscience and omnipotence, which he just did. Jay Robin did this to me on that clubhouse thing with, with pandemonium because I had said something. He's like, well, do you have a rational reason? Why is it there is no God? And I said, because the properties that are often used to define God, I think, are incoherent. So he wanted to know what they were. So I gave him the definition of the God of classical theism. An immaterial, you know, an immaterial mind that is spaceless and timeless. Right. And so he wanted to go through them one at a time. One at a time. Oh, so you're saying that nothing – so what you're trying to tell me is that there can't be a God because um, uh, anything that doesn't exist in space, um, you know, anything that's uh, uh, outside of space doesn't exist. That's what he kept doing to me. And Leighton did the same thing last night on the atheist uh, Answers in Atheism to Leo Phileas, the exact same thing. Leo told him, he's like, this thing that you're defining as being, uh, it, you know, atemporal, uh, it, you know, uh, that non-spatial, all this other kind of stuff. He's like, that's basically, that to me sounds like the same kind of, those are the same kinds of descriptions you would use for something that doesn't exist. And Leighton said, oh, so what you're saying is that just because something uh, something is infinite, um, it can exist? You just went after the one thing. Then told him he only wanted to deal with it one property at a time. Then left in a huff, went to Clubhouse, where he proceeded to do that with Darth Dawkins. And Darth Dawkins actually yelled at him because he, he told him he shouldn't have used the timeless thing because philosophers with a little bit of sophistication can beat the shit out of an atheist or out of a theist who tries to assert that a god exists outside of time or something like that. I, I thought that was kind of unusual. I don't know if, you know, maybe uh, Darth got his hand bit on the on the timeless claim, despite the fact that he, acu he, um, he judged... Uh, enlightened for doing that within a couple of minutes he was right back to defining god as eternal so i don't know if he has a problem understanding that eternal doesn't mean infinite it, it means timeless but anyway but that that statement right there that pissed me off i talked to him over two weeks ago and that was not the case because i made the point the god you're talking about is not one property and he didn't give a shit he he straw manned that argument down, and here he is admitting no, no, no. The God of Islam cannot be that. It might have some of those properties, but it doesn't have the set. And since it doesn't have the set, it's not the God of the Bible. It's not the God of classical theism. It's not the real thing. But that's not how they debate with everybody. So if you see him or any of those other hand jobs making this argument in either direction, they either don't understand what they're talking or they're fucking flat out lying. My guess is it's, a health, it's an unhealthy combination of the two.
Uh, and so, and so, these are the properties of the Christian God that that must be that are held to and that are exclusive to the Christian God. And because of that, then we uh, okay, okay, we have but okay, I, 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 Robin, I heard what you said. You said things about like uh, just want to. I don't know if you saw those when I posted them up there, uh, Tom, but. Um... I, I believe that's J.L. Warren, Bridge of the Divide. He said, I invited J.A. Robin to join this live chat. Um, he's talking mad crap in Discord. <laughs> Who is? J. Robin. Oh, in Discord? He's on Discord somewhere talking some shit. If he's on politics and religion, I can't see him because I was I was banned. Mm. I don't see Get him it. in there. Hmm. Anyways, <laughs> I would enjoy seeing Jay Robin here, but we're just about done with this, so uh, I'll keep going. Did, did you have anything you wanted to add, or no, no? At this point, I mean, it's it's down. It's, it's he's about ready to wrap it up, and I think he he gets he gets him with a great sting towards the end here. Um, yeah. But I, that that little bit right there that pissed me off because that was Jay Robin admitting that any of those other times he's trying to talk about uh, a god property by property, he's talking out his ass. Um, God being all powerful and so forth. But if someone were to ask me now that I'm a Christian, why are you a Christian? And I just say, well, because it's been revealed to me. And they say, well, so what? Uh, tell me why you think it's true. What do I say? I just gave you an answer, but I'm, I'm not going to play these charades with you and, and, and play. I'm asking way. about justifying Christianity. Yeah, he's going to go back to Clubhouse and play those charades. That's what this guy does. After he gets done here, he's going to take the diaper off that he filled, towel off, maybe maybe apply some water and soap, uh, truss himself back up, go on to Clubhouse and talk about what a big man he was and how he put it in Doug's mouth, forced it on him for a better part of an hour. Um, this J. Robin is a fucking tool. That's not a charade. I just, I, 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 just, I just did. I just gave you the properties of the Christian God. I just told you earlier about why we are christians we hold to Jesus but a god like that could savior. exist I'm, I'm and yet christianity is false I'm speaking I'm boom speaking. that we hold to the that we hold to the god of the christian bible and that that we hold that christ is uh is the sacrifice. no i don't want to hear about local a local theism we we want to hear about global theism you need to go back to the god of classical theism j robin and quit being so bitch made that's for sins and that we accept that now you either have you have two you have two options here. You either choose to accept God's revelation or choose not to accept God's revelation. Asking me reasons, right? This, that, and the other shouldn't. It's, I don't know why you're asking that if you, if you claim to be irrational. You don't no, need no, no, reasons. no, no, Robin, you misunderstand you don't need me. Reasons, Robin, though. Robin, you misunderstand me. I'm asking you. Okay, I become a Christian now, and someone, a third party, comes up to me and says, "But why are you a Christian? What do I say?" It's so transparent what that? Doug is doing, too. It's funny, man. But it kind of yeah, works. Good. I can't believe it works. Uh, Jay, Jay Robin has has appeared. Ah, oh, the irrational atheist talking about me. Yeah, we are talking about you. Uh, we're talking about um, how you um, fell over and um, broke your dick in the dirt on this one. Moving a little bit too fast here. You told me that your position was irrational. Okay. Yeah, and then I so became a Christian. Are you, are you just ready? Now. Are you ready? Are you ready now to accept Christianity? Yeah, and I said yes, and then I say okay. So, you're a, so hold on a minute. You're a Christian now. Yeah, I'm a Christian now. Okay, that's great. So, so you know, if you want to ask me questions later, then then we can do that. We can have a private. No, no. Why? Know, why do you want to leave private. now? Well, no, because it seems like because you know, now I make obvious, it. It's obviously, it's obvious. It's obvious that you're lying to me. I can tell that. I can why tell is that. it obvious? Why are you calling me a liar? It's obvious. It's obvious that you're lying. to me. Why do you but think I'm lying you're, to if you? If you're actually, if you're actually, if you're actually a Christian, then I'm, I'm glad to hear it. And then if you want to, if you want to contact me later, then we can. Then Why we can don't do you want to talk about Christianity with me now? Because you're, because you're, because you're lying. You're lying to me. Why do you think I'm lying to you? You're, you, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna explain to you why you, if you know you're lying, you know that I know. How do you lying. know I'm everyone, lying to you? Here know, and everyone here knows that you're lying to me. Then there's no. Problem. I'm asking you. Okay. Why do you, you think, think I'm lying to, lie to you? And pretend like you want to have a conversation. Denver. This is interesting. He has that. This is typical for J. Rep, and he has no problem making the claim that Doug is lying about this, right? But this is a this is a tough part. If J. and and this is the point of this, J. Rob, and I know you don't really get context and uh, you, you don't seem to take subtleties very well. 
But the implications associated with the style of apologetic that you approach, you would end up running into a situation like this where you badger somebody and maybe you get them to a point where they accept Jesus, but then you bail because let's say they were an atheist and you think that they're a scumbag and you treat them with as little respect or even less respect than you showed to Pine Creek on Pine Creek's channel, right? And then that person actually does have something of a change of heart. Maybe not a full 180, but something of a change of heart. You have to go fuck off because your your job is done. You're a shit Christian. You all you got to do is go and read First Peter to find out how shitty a Christian you are in comparison to this. Don't take my word for it. I'm just a a, a blinkered atheist. I'm denying the truth in my own righteousness. Go read your New Testament. Read First Peter. Figure out what a, how a fucking Christian's supposed to act. What, what, you know, what's the Holy Spirit supposed to be doing for you? Pretty sure it's not fucking this. We're not going to get into that. But I'm no. asking you about how so to justify get Christianity. Get you don't want to do that? I told you. I just gave you. The, I gave you the properties of the Christian. Hey, Rob's like, hey, hey, I know what again. you're trying to do. Make... Hold on a second. You're just hold on up. Hey, no. I you're see trying to... what you're trying to do. You're you're actually saying it's your friend, but it's really you trying to. Get me to, to be rational and give you my reasons for Christianity. Hey, wait a minute. You're trying to you make a good point. You can't fool me. <laughs> make sure. Hold on a minute. Stop. Okay. You told me earlier that you're being irrational. You've you said this like five times. Well, let's get right because it doesn't seem like you're understanding. Way, way more than five. And then you want to lie yeah. and contradict yourself. I okay. want to talk about Christianity so, now. So, so hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. If you accepted the truth of Christianity, if that's what you did on the dime right now, yeah, okay, then, I, then I'm then I'm happy for you. Okay, I I highly doubt that's that's the case. Okay, and so if that's the case, if you, if you did, then you can talk to me later. But I think why I do think you I doubt did, that? I think I then I think then I think, but I think that I think I did what I came and set out here to do, which is to. One, show the incoherence of, of atheism, which is kind of the whole subject matter here because you're an atheist show. I wanted to see if you're no, a Christian rational. show. It's, ob it's obvious. It's obvious that, <laughs> that that's not rational. The atheist position. And um, if, if you if you finally turn. What's the part where history, he showed that perfect. atheism was you don't want to talk about Christianity because now? I missed that part. Yeah, um, I mean, if unless he's talking about the part where Doug said that he is uh, irrational. And then Jay Robin is extrapolating from that, that, okay, if this one Christian admits to being irrational, it follows that all Christians by extension must also be irrational. But I didn't hear an explanation or a reason or, or an explainer or an argument or anything. I didn't even, we didn't even really get a synopsis. So actually we didn't even get good reasons, did we, from Jay Robin? Usually he would say like, you're denying the truth and unrighteousness or suppressing the truth and unrighteousness or something like that. And quote, quote, you know, tell Jay Robin to come in here. Hell, you can come in here. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, post you can tell me how it's necessarily the case that, um, God, uh, must be always truth revealing in order for there to be intelligibility. That'll be fun to finally get that argument. Uh, again, I, do you think it's going to work this time? Do you think it's going to take? <laughs> no, no, no. He won't. He won't answer questions like that. He won't give arguments like that. If 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 he comes in, he's he's got to he's got to tell somebody to um to 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 invite me back into politics and religion so I can continue my reign of terror. Um. I'm exaggerating. I never had a rant of terror at politics and religion. I, I, I barely listened in, but Darth's going to be going back soon because, um, you know, it's only a matter of time. I mean, Jay Robin is getting so frustrated and cooped up over there that he had to go. He had to make a run at Doug. So I can only imagine what Darth's going through. No, because you're lying to me. It's obvious. I'm not going to. I'm not going to. What makes it no obvious to you? If you don't, if you don't, if you can't figure that out, then I, I don't have anything to say to you. But you just told okay. me I could just choose to become a Christian. Yes. Yeah. I, listen, these these are the these are the sleaze tactics <laughs> that you use before. I've, I've seen your interaction with other people, and this is exactly. Robin, what you I'm being very time. sincere with you right this now. Exactly please, please, please Robin, please listen to me. Okay, you're muted again, uh, but please listen. I'm going to be very sincere with you. I can see you're still talking, but I'll wait till you. For, yeah, I'm going to be very sincere with you. You earlier just said that I could just choose to be a Christian. And when I did, 
you called me a liar. You don't believe me. Now, if what you said was true, please listen to me, Robin. If what you said was true, that I can just on a dime choose to become a Christian, then why do you doubt so much I really am? Okay, I'll unmute you. That's a that's this a great is, point. This is the tactics of and Jay Robin, watch this. Jay Robin does not touch that. Can you use before? Okay, these are the 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 tactics that are you know this dishonest bad faith tactics that's been used in the past. And so I'm not I'm not a stranger to anything that you're doing right now. Okay, I'm very familiar. I'm very familiar with how you interact with other people. I'm very familiar with it. And I think I, I think I did what I came here to do. I think I, I think the mission has been accomplished. You've been shown to be completely irrational. And honestly, if if you do want to turn to Christianity, then you can contact me later. Um, but this is not, of course, not the place for it right now. So, um, welcome, Jay Robin. We're just going to wrap up the rest of this video here, real quick. No, I'd like to hear. I'd like to hear from you how it is the case that there's no God. Hang on, we're going to play this. We're going to we're going to play. Right, well, you can you can you can ping me on Discord after you're here. I'm not here. How do I contact you later if I have questions? So if you don't get to talk right away, he he just he just chickened out. What? We had we had a minute left, not even a minute left of this, and I told him I wanted to play the rest of this because I was playing this for the audience. And he said, "Okay, well then you can come talk to me on Discord," and just fucked wow. off. Wow! What like a that, fucking huh? bitch! All right, uh, uh, links open, guys. Uh, J. Robin chickened out because he's terrified of me and uh, the little white rabbit. Daisy, how are you doing? You're muted. You're on here. I'm going to play the rest of the video, so uh, we will chat with you in a, in a minute. If you're getting around or anything, don't worry about it. I'm going to play at the last of this. Well, Christian, I'll send you something in the chat. Don't worry about it. What's I'll your name in the chat? chat. Or, I'll send you, you something can, in the chat. Can, or you can uh, go on to Discord. I'm on Discord. What's your name on Discord or, or in the chat? It's the same. It's my same name. In politics and religion. Kirkland Signature oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And you'll talk to me then? About Christianity? Sure. We could, we could have, sure. Have a, a talk about I don't understand why you're willing to talk to me in the future about Christianity, but not right now. You got something uh, to because, do? Because no, I don't have any. I don't have anything in particular. But I. Well, I then why not just talk to me, to me now? I know that you're, because I know that I know that you're lying to me. So if you want to, if you want to talk to me later about it, then you can. I, you know, you know where to get me. You know where to find me. That'll that'll be that. Okay. Well, I'm a little disappointed that you didn't want to talk about Christianity now. <laughs> I mean, if I can just choose to be, uh, become a Christian, like you said, and then I do, and then you think, call me a liar, I'm perplexed. <laughs> so that's pretty much it. Uh, Jay Robin, I'm not going to ping you when we're done. We are done with the video. I said I was going to play out the rest of that for the audience because that was sort of the point of my show. So if you would like to come in and chat, go right ahead. The link is still pinned. So... Jay, how you doing? Daisy, how are you? Hey, uh, uh, Jay Robin. Um, I hope he's not a salesman. I don't. I don't know if he's a salesman or not. Yeah, I, I mean, okay. you know, it sounds like he'd sell you something, but then when you got questions, he won't answer. <laughs> well, he's he's coming in now, so let's see what he's got to say. All right, welcome back, Jay Robin. Uh, evening. So, are you ready to answer uh, how it is the case that there's no God, Jefferson? Uh, since the last time we talked to you, you failed miserably. Well, you can talk that. to me, Jay Robin. You can talk to hold me. On, hold on, hold on. I'm asking Jefferson a question here. Yeah, but I'm saying that, like... I'm asking actually... Jefferson a question, Tom. It's not. It's, this is not your show, unfortunately. This is Jefferson, so I'm asking Jefferson <laughs> if he wants to defend is his that, position. Is that what dictates who you want to talk to? Who is show? I can talk, yeah, talk to, I wasn't I can talk exactly... to whoever I can talk to whoever I want to talk to. He invited me on here. I'm coming on here. So, Jefferson, we talked last time. Last time I talked to you, you failed miserably in defending your position. Have you thought up a new argument for how is the case that there's no God? Uh, no, because... Um, so you're I, still irrational. Can... Did I make that claim or did Doug? Are you no, I mean, no, again? no, you're still irrational because if you didn't, if you failed miserably the last time, you haven't, you haven't revived your argument, then you're still irrational. If you're irrational the last get... time, you're rational now. I didn't give you an argument. I gave you reasons. That's right. You didn't give me an argument. That's right. Well, let's you not make the same irrational. mistake that. Um... Hang on. Hang on a second. Before yeah, before this gets a little too fucked up, I just want to make this point right now because Jay Robin would like to take me into what he would like to have happen, which is round two with Pine Creek. Uh, but I'm not going to fall for that, um, mostly because the question that so he's you don't asking... have a rationale for your atheism. 
uh, hang on, I wasn't done talking yet. Um, and I'll let you know when you can. Uh, Tom, what were you going to say? Well, I was just going to say, if you're going to engage with J. Robin, you should not make some of the same mistakes that we saw in the last video. And you should actually get a definition of rational. You should actually get a definite. You should actually hash out what All exactly. Right, so if, you know, if you don't know rational means, I'm not going to be here. I'm not going to have a conversation with you if you don't know what it means to be rational. Okay. Well, this is no, we want your so, definition. Well, you so, do you, so, so do you have? Definition. So do you have? So do you? So do you have a rational definition or rational explanation? I should say. I mean, this is just. An, there's no God. I mean, for Jefferson? example, do, do you think that incoherent I'm not means not? To, uh, so Tom, I'm not talking to you. Why are you so Jefferson, afraid of me, do you have bro? A Tom, do you, or Je Jefferson, do you have a rational? You know, you, you're gonna defense. you're gonna need to slow your roll, man. Do you have a rational um, defense for your position, Jefferson? What does that yes, mean? I think I do. If you don't know well, what it means, so Jeff so Jeff I'm not. So by the way, Tom, you're not Jefferson's mouthpiece. Je Jefferson can speak for himself. I am on no, 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 Jefferson, Jefferson. All right, hang on. This is what we're gonna do. Do you not um, know what rational this, means? If you don't know what it means, then we're done. You need to you need to calm down because I got to do some moderating here. Everybody else that's in here, what I'm gonna do is um, I did bring you in here because I didn't think Jay Robin was gonna come back. Um, let me, let me, I'm going to put you guys out. All right. Uh, the link's still up, but I'm going to set you guys out there. Jay Robin can stay. Uh, obviously Tom's going to stay here because we, we kind of arranged this in advance. So I'm going to move you guys out of here. Um, cause I don't, cause I can already see this is going to turn into a lot of crosstalk if there's, if there's too many people in. So everybody that's in the well, back, this, is, this isn't going to last very long if you don't know what rational means. So I'm just going to, I'm asking straight. you what your definition of, do you know, do you know, do you have a rational defense for your position that there is no depends God. on Jefferson. what you mean by rational bro do you not know what rational means i do what do you mean by good it? so do you have a rational defense for your position from nope. which it necessarily we need to, follows we need... from which it necessarily follows that there is no god have you given up on to trying to settle on terms uh we know what rational means if you don't know what rational means then i can't help you unfortunately i don't have the crayons i, mean, do you... I don't have the crayons here to explain it to you do you uh, mean so do you, that do you, do you, do you mean... have a rational definition or rational explanation terrified for like i said like I, I said, I don't really care about what you have to say, Tom Rabbit. I don't. Hey, hey, stop that. All right. He was my guest first. Don't. I don't. don't, I, don't, do I, don't I couldn't care less. You invited me here. I, I don't. No, I didn't invite you here. Actually, J.L. Actually Warren posted it... a... All right. So the... the the link did not come from me directly. I think it came from J.L. Warren. All right. You're welcome you to verbally stand invited me on here. Yes, you did. I... Yes, I did after the fact. Good. Yes, after the link was shared with you. You didn't have to keep the link up. It's your channel. The link to Discord? I didn't. No, you didn't have to keep the links. This is your channel. You don't have to keep links oh, no. on anything. You can delete, right, but I left it open them. after. Good, you, I exactly. left it or, open after right. you stormed right. out the first okay, time. Okay, so do you have do you have a rational defense for your position, Jefferson? I already told you that I do, but you haven't answered Good. my so question. So go ahead and give it. How does no. it follow that there's no God? No. Def so you're gonna chicken. So you get. So you're gonna chicken out like it did the last time. Actually, last no. time was much worse. It was a colossal failure. Maybe I should post that onto it, my YouTube channel. It wasn't so you. Who, how many of you were talking over me at the time? Uh, there was only wasn't it you and Antonio? No, that you, Tom, you and Antonio, Antonio were actually Tom talking came after. after. No, I'm going to mute you. If you continue to overtalk me, I'm going to mute you. Stop that. This is not your channel. Hey, Rob, just calm you down, guys bro. did do that, and you need to. You, and you do need to calm down. Here's the thing. I, I already told, told you. There's no God, Jefferson. I already told you that I think that I do have a rational definition, but I'm asking you to explain to us and explain to the audience watching what you think rational is how do you define rational all right so, you, so you're gonna you're gonna dodge and evade and chicken out like you did the last no time. look here, here's what here here's what i think I'll that give you one more, i'll Just give you can, one more chance i'll give you one more chance so what i think jay robin yeah, means tom, is he tell me help, tom. He tell me help. why he help, it don't, necessarily don't, don't. Look, this is yeah, just clarity. Jefferson. I don't know why you're so afraid of clarity. Right? Jeff Jefferson, how can you just mute him for just about? one second so I can get this out? Because yeah, it'll I, help yeah a lot. I don't want to keep muting it, but let Tom Rabbit finish his point and then you can He'll talk. probably leave uh, anyway, but it doesn't matter. I think Jay Robin means when he says, what's your rational reason? I think he means give an argument for why it necessarily follows. Now, that's what I think he means. And if he th if that is the case, then we can proceed from there, Jay Robin. But um there are different senses of rational and for you to just hand wave and just say oh if you don't know what i'm talking about then you're just like not worth talking to ridiculous because like what if i said hey and this actually happened to me the other day right if i said hey you've been alive cj robin for like 25 years and every single day you've observed the sun come up now if your mom said to you hey this i think the sun is going to come up tomorrow would you call her irrational now that's a sense of of rational and irrational that
doesn't seem to be what you're talking about, right? So if you could tell us which sense of rational are you talking about, and then we can proceed with the conversation. Okay, are you finished talking? Because I'm not. I'm not here to talk to Tom Rabbit. I'm here to talk to Jefferson Spatchcock. So Jefferson Spatchcock, I would like you to answer his question. Does it follow that there is no God, Jefferson? I want you to answer his question. Jefferson, how does it follow that there is no God? Please answer Tom's question. Just answer. Just look. If you want to have a conversation, just answer Jefferson, the question, and we can. How proceed. does it follow that there is no God, Jefferson? A please answer Tom's question. I'm happy to answer that question if you ask. If so you, you don't. So do you have? So do. So let me get this straight. You don't have. A, a line of reasoning or justification. I'm, even, I'm not even Facebook making you define it. I said, is this what you're saying? Question mark. You just have to say yes or no, and then proceed. Jefferson, the Jefferson. Deal? I think Jefferson. Jefferson knows what I'm asking him. How does it follow? I'm not going to assume to know what you. I'm not going to assume your position. How does it follow that there's I'm not no going to assume Jefferson? your. I am not going to assume your position. Please answer my question or Tom's. I'm waiting. I, so I'm not am gonna, I. I'm not, not going to wait all day either. So and neither you know, am I. Not, good. So you're gonna, if, I, I, if, I look, advise that we that we get this moving, or we can just call it a night. So you don't want to settle terms. You don't want to define terms. You just no. Want I just to asked run you. I just asked you how does it follow. If you deal? don't know, if you don't know what it means to say how does something follow, then I don't know how to help you there either. Necessarily. Uh, okay. Are you saying that you agree with Tom's de definition then? Your answer. Yeah, how does yes? it follow necessarily that that is the case that there's no God? This is not. Yeah, no one here not thinks controversial that. Or complicated. No one here thinks that. This is not here. This is not controversial. Your position, Jefferson, is that there is no God, correct? I believe that there are no gods, yeah. Good. So how does that No, no, follow? no. That's, I believe that there is no gods is not the same as there is no gods. Okay. Jefferson, how does it follow that there is no God? How does it follow from what? My reasons, or are you asking for an argument? How You're does making it follow, the same mistake you did before. How does it follow that there is no God, Jefferson? How does it follow from what? How does it follow? How is it the case? J. Robin, are you asking me no my... Jefferson. I'm going to mute you because I'm going to explain this, and I'm going to explain this again, and I'm going to do it very slowly because it's my channel. If you are asking me... God does not me, exist because, Jefferson? God does not if exist you are, because? If you are asking me for my reasons why I don't believe in something or why I believe something to be the case, that is very different than asking me to provide you with an argument to disprove the existence of something or prove the existence of something. Which God one are you not, asking God me? God does not exist because, Jeff Jefferson? Which one are you asking just, me? Just finish the sentence, okay? Then we'll, then we'll be done. No. Which one are you i just asked God a clarifying question because God, what does that question mean yeah, jay robin look 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 it seems like this is not getting through to your head so i'm just gonna i'm gonna it's definitely not getting through to I'm gonna, one I'm gonna, means, it's not getting he through. means it's impossible for god it, to exist this, because that's this, what he means i'm gonna make this very simple for you just finish the sentence just finish the sentence okay i'm gonna rephrase the question just finish the I'm, sentence i'm not gonna play that god game. does not exist because i'm what, not playing that game because that question he means God does not exist. He means I don't he means tell him. he means God tell me because. why it's impossible for God to exist. That's what he means. God oh. does not exist because. Do you mean do you mean like what Tom's saying? I'm asking, I need I need Tom here to. God does not exist you. because I don't I don't need Tom's help right now. God does not exist. Because Jefferson does. He's Jeff. You is he getting Jefferson? Yeah, is, needs a lot of help to understand. Is Tom, is, I know he, is I know he Tom, does. I know he needs help. So I mean, maybe he shouldn't have added me on here because he's going to get. Yeah, is, is Tom getting time. is Tom getting you right? Jeff, God does not exist because Jefferson is Tom getting you right. God does is not Tom exist because. I'm, go, I'm just going to wait. I'm just going to. I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to wait. Jay Robin, I thought you'd be interested. Is like, Tom mis is Tom misrepresenting your questions to me? I'm going to wait until you finish answering. You do this better than I'll me. Give you, yeah. I'll give you. I'll give you. You can either boot me or offer you. Just going. I'll just wait until you finish answering the question. Tom, can you ask the question you think Tom uh, J. Robin is asking me? No, yeah, you don't need yeah, Tom's yeah. help. I gave you the question. I gave it to you. I, I worded saying, it the way I did. God does not exist because. No, you don't. You don't want to clarify it. Go ahead and finish the sentence. I'm going to what, assume that you think yeah, that Tom Rabbit is, is getting your position it. right. So what help is no? I don't, don't take don't take Tom's advice on anything. I'm giving you the question. I'm not going to confirm or deny anything about what Tom said. Right, but when I asked you, I'm asking you. This is a one-on-one. one-on-one conversation. And I asked you a clarifying. Don't ever talk about somebody having. This is a one-on-one conversation. A, a non good stop faith it. actor. Stop. God does not exist because. Jay, stop, J. Robin. Stop. I'm just going to wait until you answer I'm, the question. Good. That's that's best. As long as you're quiet. This is my issue with what's going on. I'm asking you clarifying questions and you don't want to answer them. And then when I ask Tom Rabbit to provide me with what he thinks the answers are to my clarifying questions, you don't seem to want him to talk either and you want this to be a one on one conversation. What I asked you last time was. Is Tom Rabbit misrepresenting your questions to me? 
meaning is he getting them wrong? And you don't seem to care. You're just repeating the same question. The question that you were asking me is fraught with problems, the first of which is a basic misunderstanding. Or if you're looking for my reasons for why I don't believe, that's a lower bar than asking me to present you with an argument for why there is no God or why the existence of one is impossible, whatever. I asked you, of those two possible forks, which one best represents the question you're asking me now? You just want my reasons for why I don't believe, or you want me to present you with some kind of deductive proof or some falsification for why God's impossible? Which one is it? Are you yeah, going to I told you I told you I was going to wait for for your answer to the question. You heard me. You heard what I said already. I told you, you know, if you need to And I'm a, I I'll asked say, you, you know, I'll say, I'll say it one more time. I'll say it one more time. You can write it down. Take a good hard look at the words on the paper. Uh digest it. Me mentally apprehend it and then you can answer the question. This is the question. Pay careful attention. See, I'm going to say it slowly, okay, for you. I'm going to say it slowly for you. God does not exist because See, remember when I talked about this in the very beginning of the stream, Jefferson, that after 95% of people they ask this question to, not understanding, and asking clarific for clarification multiple times, how can it be any more clear to anybody? They don't want to be clear. No. Yeah, clarification is definitely not, not desired. Are you, so are you going to answer the question, Jefferson, or no? Just so you I, mind I, if I, waste, you so mind so if I don't waste my time. Just do you so mind I if I know what you're going to sure, do? Can I, so can I answer, answer both? Can can I answer like kill both? You can answer my question, yes. You can answer. Don't I'm, I'm ever criticize anyone for being a bad faith interlocutor. Are you going to answer my question, Jefferson? I just asked you if I can answer both. Both. I only asked you one question. No, I phrased it a few different ways, but I answered. I'm but only they can be, essentially one that question. question. That question can be answered several ways. No, I, I asked you, how, God does not exist because, so if, you, if what, you're you, just give, what keep... you give needs to be, therefore, God does not exist. It's very There's simple. no problem repeating okay. it the exact so same. So God does not exist because? Won't use yeah. different words for clarification. This is unreal. Yeah, uh, this, uh, again, if I answer this question, and there's two different ways. I can, if you want an argument or some kind of single property dispute of God or multiple property dispute, uh, disproof of God, we could get into that, or we could get into some kind of inductive disproof of God. It's not really a disproof, but um, you know, kind of the Santa Claus example. Um, or I some mean, just kind tell, of, just just say like, look, I mean, if if he's not willing to give clarification of question, then just tell us when you're ready, I and mean, then we'll just leave you on mute or something. You tell us in the chat when you're ready. Yeah, if 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 you'd rather not, I mean, because I, I I want you to I want you to tell me what you mean by this question because you seem to be acting as if what I'm presenting to you, Jay Robin, is some kind of is something dishonest. But if you want my honest answer, you need to provide me with it with some kind of response to the clarification question that I asked. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Like 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 I said earlier, Jefferson. Um, to just say, oh, you know what rational means. They have proprietary definitions for all sorts of things, not even even God, right? And they have a proprietary definition of coherent, right? It doesn't mean that it entails some contradiction, right? And Jay Robin, it, you it gotta, means you gotta, that gotta it doesn't conform to the mind of God. So for him to say, hey, I'm not going to like define that because you know what it means, that's absurd. You're not known only that, for but, having proprietary yeah. definitions. And for losing, he's also known, along with several other people, for losing his shit when he realizes that somebody is using a definition of a term in a way that he doesn't agree with or a way that he didn't. That, and if they had actually defined those terms beforehand, they never would have ended up in those issues, in those those little impasses. But I suspect, as Tom uh, has been telling everyone here on my channel, that that lack of clarity is something that you want. Because you can just hide in the mayhem. If you're interested in clarity and you want my honest answer to that question, I need you to tell me what you're interested in. Alex Malpass told Darth Dawkins this. He was giving his reasons for why he didn't believe, and Darth Dawkins tried to accuse him of committing some kind of, uh, some logical fallacy, right? A formal logical fallacy. And Malpass stopped him right in his heels and said, no, I'm not giving you an argument. You asked me for my reasons. I'm giving you my reasons. The, the kinds of fallacies that you're trying to invoke don't apply, right? 
I've watched you, J. Robin, and Enlighten, and, to and uh, Tone Loke, and, 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 and Darth are all doing this now. You ask somebody for their reasons for why they don't believe in God, and you treat it like what they're giving you is some syllogistic argument, and then you apply informal fallacies to their reasons as if they're formal fallacies to a logical deductive argument. And that is a category shift and massively confusing. It demonstrates a total lack of charity and a complete misunderstanding of not only the philosophy, but also the theology. So again, I'll ask you, do you want to answer my clarifying questions? Because if you don't, you can leave. If the answer is no, then you can just answer by leaving. Okay. Yeah, I told you I was going to wait for an answer to your question. So everything you just said there, I'm, I, was, I, would, I didn't take it as an answer then to we're my question. An, so then we're, we're at an impasse. I want an answer to my clarifying question. So I'm, I'm still want... waiting for an answer to my question. So everything am I. you said there wasn't an answer, so I'm, I'm, I'm still an, waiting. I'm, an, I'm waiting for an answer to my question. If you do not give it, then you feel free to leave. I'm not going to answer. I'm not going to play games if you're not going to define terms. This is just rule 101, man, of any kind of discussion. Make a reasonable request, man. I mean, we. I can wait, but. Oh, so now it's just like. Okay, so I'll just give you the question. I'll give you the question one last time because apparently you didn't. You don't need to. Getting. I need the answer like, to my question. Apparently, you didn't understand it. Okay, so we're talking I mean, about apparently. God. Yeah. You didn't understand it. That, that's why you're asking for quote unquote clarification. It, you didn't understand it. Exactly. You, you didn't it's understand a, it. So I'm going to ask the question again. I'm going to ask the question again. I'm going to ask the question again. You're going to ask it again. Ways. Okay. Are you going to ask it again? So, Are you going to ask it again? So. Will you ask it again? I'm about, just wondering if you're going to ask it again. Yeah, I just told you I was. So okay, we're going to yeah, conceive good. of God, for one, as a mind that's ultimate to all of reality. That's that's number one. So we'll conceive of God in that fashion. So if that's how we're going to conceive of God, then you're either going to be for, or you're going to believe that he does exist, or you're going to believe that he does not exist. Okay? That's, that's for one. Now, your position is that God does not exist. So I want to know from you, God does not exist because, so whatever you say, it better be, Whatever you say, therefore, God does not exist. I've already told you this numerous times. This is not complicated nor controversial. Everyone with a brain should be able to understand this. Right. It seems to me that you're looking for a falsification for uh, a concept that is poorly defined. It's right? not poorly defined. I just defined it. You said it was what? I, I said it was an eternal, ultimate mind. That's what I said. What do you mean by ultimate? That all things, all of the things derive and depend upon it. That it is a source for all things. And eternal means timeless. Yeah, without without a beginning or an end. Is it also spaceless? It would be transcendent of everything else. So spaces, so, spaces might might try to tie into that, but we're just talking about that which is ultimate and to all of reality, and it's in mind. So you're talking about an immaterial mind that is instantiated by nothing that exists in no time and in no place. It sounds like you're talking about nothing. No, I'm not. Can you define I God as something use other this, than it's... Use this. I'm going to use this. Hang on. No. Hang this on. I'm terrible excuse no, for an argument. No. No. That's not my argument. Right now, we're just... Uh, hang on. Can you define God as something other than what it isn't? I just did. I just told you he's ultimate and it's a mind. You do, you you introduced the other concepts into it. That Ult was, ultimate that was, compared to was, what? Wasn't. Okay. So can you... That's what ultimate, ultimate is literally means that it's... It's defined as that which everything else depends and derives upon. I, so I already explained just, this to you. It's now you're, you're trying, you the one that introduced concepts that are, that are negative concepts and trying to attribute that to, to what I said originally. You said not. it's so timeless. Talking about bad faith acting, that's, what you're, that's exactly what you're doing. No, it, timeless means that it exists outside of time. Uh, and if it's transcendent, then it exists outside of space. So it doesn't exist anywhere and it is, uh, doesn't exist at any point in time. And it's also you've defined it as a mind. No, it's not extended it's not in. It's not extended in time. Okay, so to say it's not uh, sure, but the, the way to verbalize it is that it's not extended or dependent upon time for its existence. Okay, because it's transcendent. It's so it doesn't exist in space either. So does it exist all the time or none of the time? Yeah, you're now applying a temporal aspect. It's like, does it exist here or does it exist there? It, that's a stupid question to ask. Asking okay, so then we're talking about no time. Well, yeah, then basically we're not talking about. You're talking about something that could not exist, right? That I mean, it could it just as likely be something that doesn't exist. No, that's not necessarily the case. How do you how did you determine I that? Didn't if say it was something, I didn't no, say it was necessarily just, okay, the so case. Okay, so then good. So then if, that's not, if it's not necessarily the case, and I want to hear your argument, 
or whatever your rationale is that necessarily follows that there's no God. Very simple. Again, you're asking for a falsification for this concept, but this concept Good. And so you, but you, just, you just admitted that what you just said wasn't a falsification, so I'd like to hear something else because your first argument was a fail. I, I didn't. Okay. So what, what now are you looking for? You know, or you already know. You're looking for a falsification for the concept of a God that's not, it's, it's essentially the definition that you've given me is a ghost with willpower. Yeah, you can you can mischaracterize and define it whatever you want to do it. I already defined it, and so you go you go ahead and give your answer when you're ready. I already told you that it, that's not a concept that you could really falsify one way or the other. So I don't know what you're looking for. Do you believe you believe this being does not exist? Correct. I believe it's just as likely that being doesn't exist as does. That's not what I said. You believe that this being does not exist. Correct. I believe it's just as likely that being doesn't that's exist. That's not what I asked you. Does. That's not what I asked given, you. Given the concept that you've rolled out, that's exactly that's not what, what that's I, not what I asked you. Either you believe it exists or not, or either you believe it does not exist or not. There's two positions here. You either believe it exists or you believe it does not exist. There's no. Yeah, and I know you guys other, like. To, I know any you guys other, like, any other scenario. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know you so, guys like to play in those. So, true So, no, are you going to accept the true dichotomy? That that's true dichotomy ontologically, but. When it comes to yeah, but belief. It, but it's just a conceptual one, right? I can hypothetically agree to it or hypothetically disagree to it with with almost the exact same level of. Do you believe that this being exists or no? No, I don't. Dude, believe Jay, Robin, calm down, okay, so man. do you believe that this being does not exist or you claim to be neutral? Well, no, I don't. I don't claim to be neutral. Okay, so then I you believe. It does, so then the only. So then the only other option is that you believe it does not exist. Okay. So I don't. How does it follow? How does it follow? No, this, those are the only three options that someone can verbalize. They either believe that it exists, they believe it doesn't exist, or they're going to hold to the neutral or or non-committal position. That's the you only don't believe the here. third one is. You okay. don't believe the third one, right? Yes, but those are the only three positions someone can verbalize. Okay, so. It doesn't no, matter anyway. It doesn't matter. Listen, it doesn't matter anyways because I asked you and you just said you you don't hold to the to the ascent right. or the neutral. So the only yeah, other option is is, is the negative. Yeah. So yeah, how yeah, does yeah. it follow that there is no God? Tom, Tom, Jesus, shut up. Tom, uh, or not Tom. Sorry, Tom. Jay, shut up. Tom, uh, you wanna you wanna run with? I'm kind of interested about that because he said that there's only three positions that can be verbalized. Do you think that's true? Oh, uh, I mean verbalized i mean like any position could be i'm asking you jefferson can you defend can you defend your position what was my position uh from what from the looks of it you just told me that you don't affirm you don't hold to the negation or sorry you don't hold to the affirmative and you don't are not neutral so then you deny the god's existence so what's the defense for that logically or necessarily well I'm, I'm trying to understand this here because this just seems like a classic burden shift so you're positing an entity right and it seems like the way that you're defining it um is a little on the flabby side you're asking me to defend the idea that it could not exist right i'm, I'm asking you to defend the proposition that this being does not exist okay right but are you asking me to defend that or are you asking me to defend the proposition that it's impossible for that thing to exist I'm asking you to, def your position is that it does not exist, correct? I don't think a being like that exists, no. Okay, good. So how does that follow? That follows because uh, that being or whatever that set of properties is also matches uh, a lot of other things in the same set of things that don't exist. You've just defined something based on what it, doesn't, it is. It doesn't follow, it doesn't follow it from that. It doesn't follow from that, that it doesn't exist. So that's a non sequitur Can, fallacy. How so many do, you have things... a non do you have a non fallacious line of reasoning to give? That wasn't fallacious. Consider yes, it, it was, this because it doesn't necessarily follow no, you. No, hang on. No, this is my You told me yourself gonna... it didn't follow. I'm going to so explain this. Stop. You're being fallacious. You can, I'm sure you're going to say that a lot. You're probably going to get it wrong. Because it's true and you know it. I, I don't know that I'm being fallacious. But well, then that's, it, that's a shame. You know what? You know what? I promise you. I promise you. If you point out a, fall a fallacy that I'm, that I'm engaging in and Tom backs it, I can see that, you know, the presence of two witnesses. I think you can, I think you can dig that. Do you have a non-fallacious line of reasoning from which it follows that there is no God? Okay. Well, so far there hasn't been anything presented, right? Other than just a concept of a being loosely defined, right? And ha have you presented an you have argument? A non-fallacious line of reasoning? What is your, the only, so the only definitions, the only properties being allowed to me right now? Is that this is an immaterial, timeless, spaceless mind, right? Do any of the other properties of God need to need to cohere? Do they need to be? Uh, the definition obtained? I gave to the, the definition I gave to you was that it's an ultimate mind, and if uh, it would 
it could entail that it is, uh, you know, it transcends these other things. Sure. But I, the definition I gave to you was that it's an ultimate mind. Okay. So how does but it does follow that, that it doesn't exist? But for you, does that mean that it obtains all the stuff that's in, that um, the Christian God has? No, because you're an atheist. I'm uh, dealing with a general definition. Okay, extended you, properties you are not, are not on or off the you table told, right now, but we're talking you about, Pine we're talking about, you told we're Pine talking about a general the definition here. of God right now. You told Pine Creek in the video here because he was talking about these properties. And when he was asking, well, hey, there are eight, I, there are Muslims I know that believe in a God that has these properties. You said, no, they don't believe in their, their God might have some of those properties, but he doesn't have the whole set, not the whole thing. Now you seem to have stripped that away. You're presenting me with some scaffold of a God and asking me to. You're a global atheist, right, Jefferson? If by that you mean white atheist, yes, I yeah. good. So how does it follow that what I just gave you is not is not existent or is not? No, true? I don't think you're being honest because the property. How does it? Follow, I'm asking you to defend not, your position. So if you can't honestly defend your position, that's not my problem. Maybe you're afraid of you're your not, position, and you're and yeah, me holding yeah, to the fire is you know threatening to you. I you're understand. You're not holding my feet to any fire. There's so then this should then it should be easy for you to defend your position non fallaciously. You need the first to stop. rationale you gave was a fail. So do you? Have you haven't you haven't done a good job. You've done a very good job of attempting to misrepresent a lot of positions that you believe I hold, but... Do you have a rational definition or justification for your position? How many times are you going to ask me that question? Until you answer non-fallaciously. Can you present the actual God you wish me to reject? I already did. So your God is simply an immaterial mind that is spaceless and timeless? That's the one we're talking about, yes. That's all your God is? Yeah, that's what we're talking about. I just I already told okay. you three times. No, that I mean that God as defined that that sounds like the kind of concept for something that could also just as easily not exist. You we already went over this. It's a non sequitur. You already told me that that doesn't necessarily follow that it does not exist. So you gave a non sequitur it's, answer. Jay Robin, it's, it's just a, a rejection of time. it's a rejection of the it's premise. It's a fallacy of, for a second time. You're making a claim that this particular entity exists, but you haven't made an argument for why it does. I don't need to You're give asking, an argument. I'm asking you to defend your position. That's burden shifting. You should know that. No, that's not burden shifting. I'm, did, I, actually, am I not, ask, am I not, did I not come here to ask you to defend your position? You asked me if I believed in but this Then concept. I don't need to give an argument for my position. My position is irrelevant. I need you to defend your position because you claim to no, be you an, are, an atheist. You are burden shifting. So how does it, no, I'm not because I didn't make a claim. You can only burden shift if you're the first one to make a claim and then someone asks you to defend your claim and then you, you turn and ask the other person. That's exactly what you're doing right now. You're talking about me defending so my you, position when I didn't oh, come here with a position to, to defend. I'm asking you to defend your position, which is that this being that okay. I defined does not exist. All right, all right. So how does it follow? So you don't believe it exists either, then? How does it follow that this being, my position is irrelevant. How does it follow that this being does not exist, Jefferson? I've already told you that based on what you're actually proposing here, that that being really can't be argued for or against, as far as I can tell. You believe it does not, not exist, really correct? You believe, so hold on a minute. So are you conceding now you don't have a, a, a rational argument for how it follows that it doesn't exist? I believe that that entity doesn't exist in the same way I don't I don't think that Santa Claus exists, so but you we're don't, not talking so, about that. To be clear, to be clear, I want to get a clear answer to the question I just asked you. Your position is that you don't have an argument to, to falsify the existence of God. The ex the existence of this God, right? Yeah, that's that's you believe it doesn't exist, so you don't have an argument to, to falsify it, do you? No, because I already told you that I don't think that that can be falsified. Good. But so, I don't... So, you, so, then you're, so then you're not rational, you're irrationally holding to that position. No. Yes, it is, because you don't have a rational justification for a non-existence. Do, do you need to false? Do you need to logically falsify everything you don't believe in? Uh, when it comes to some sort of a metaphysical framework, yeah, you're, you're gonna is gonna either necessarily exist or not exist. So if you don't have a necessary necessary falsifier for it, then you then you're rationally holding to the negation of the you, position that I'm talking then about. Then I, since it's the season, can you can you falsify the existence of Santa Claus for us? So do, I want to get I want to get an answer to the question here. Do you have a rational defense for your position? I just asked you a follow-up question. No, you, I'm not going to you, answer your question until you answer mine. Hang you on, have, I, I want getting, to get a resolution. I'm, I want to get a resolution to the issue. Uh, yeah, I know. I'm getting bored. So let, I know. I know this is very. I know this. Stop. I get it. Stop. Do you have a, do you have a definition? If you keep or, stop it. Stop. Do you have a right, rationale? Stop now, right now. No, you don't. This is what I have a problem with. I've already told you if by rational defense or some kind of rational justification for or against you mean, can I falsify it? I've already admitted that I can't. So why do you keep asking me this question? 
What I'm telling you, you is not sure. that I want I to get a, a yes or no I'm answer. Not, I want to get a clear yes or no I, answer. I'm going to continue to. So the answer is no. You don't have. I'm going to continue defense. to do this because you are completely wrong-headed in this. The you premise have that you have presented to me, I'm rejecting, just out of just off just out of course. You haven't presented an argument for why this thing either must exist or does exist. You've just said, here's a concept for a thing. Now you tell me why that thing can't exist. I don't know why. You it believe it doesn't exist. So, I mean, look, you believe it doesn't exist. You've already hold up the position. I want to see if it's rational or not. You, because you've the, apparently because said now, proper, so, right. so I'm, I'm, I think I'm assuming, hey, Robin, because you didn't because give me a straight answer. The, the answer is no, you don't have a rational defense for your position, right? You don't have a rational defense for your position. The properties, the properties. So why, properties, why are you being irrational? The properties, the properties of the being that you posited, right, can you apply to things that just as likely don't exist. Jefferson, why are you being irrational? How is that being irrational? Because you just told me you don't have a rational defense for your position. You no, I you, you hold that this being does not exist. Again, when we're talking about metaphysical frameworks. Jay Robin, do you think a lack of falsification that which is ultimate means and foundational absence of be, rationality? It's going to be falsified necessarily. Jay Robin, do you or believe it's be, or it's Jay be Robin, a no. No, you no. don't have a falsifier. So, you, so what? You don't have a metaphysical framework to stand on. Do you believe that a, that that falsification? If if falsification can't happen, then all rationality ceases to be, right? It has to be false. No, that's not what I said. I said that when we're talking about a metaphysical framework, that the one is going to be replaced with the other, and these are going to necessarily be the case. We're not talking are, about a metaphysical all, framework. We're talking yes, about yes, the existence of That is of exactly an what we're talking about. That is exactly what we're talking about here. Now, do you, now do you're you, changing have, do you the guy. have a falsifier? No, no, we're not. We're, this is what we've, just we've been talking about this this whole time. We've been talking about the metaphysical worldview that is a creator creation distinction, that God is ultimate. That's another way of just saying that there is an ultimate just, God and that now you're else adding is more creation. stuff. No, I'm not adding it. Creator creation distinction is just literally just another word for me saying that God is ultimate and everything else depends upon him. It's, it's the same thing as saying that, okay? It's the really? same thing. It's just another, it's, yes, yes, it but is. But that's not what you asked so, me. That's not because what you it's, asked it's just me the same. It's, it's literally the, the same concept in different words. I don't need to say, I don't need to verbalize a concept in every possible conceivable way in order for me to uh, uh, communicate the point. Okay, you understood what I said the first time, anyways. Okay, so your position but is that it doesn't exist. You define... Your position, your position is that it does not exist. We've established here that you don't have a rational, logical falsifier for this being. So I think oh. my job here is done. You don't, you don't have a rational defense for your position. You're being irrational. Well, but you, thank, but you thanks can... for proving my point. And you proved that Santa's real. Yeah. So you. Now you're now you're deflecting. You now prove my point that Am there I? is no God. You're not prove you proved my point. You already know this category error. Because God oh. is not because Santa Claus is not in the not in the category of being something that is one, you can be agnostic towards Santa Claus. Okay, for one. You can be agnostic. You can you can say, I don't know whether or not Santa Claus is, is real. Uh secondly, we're not talking we're talking about that which either necessarily exists or necessarily does not exist. There's no contingency that God, you know, is, is in the no non-zero non-zero possibility on both on both you know ways it's not possible okay so now you're now you're not arguing for the one thing you're actually arguing for the god out of the contingency argument or like a modal ontological god no we're talking about that which is we're talking about that which is necessarily either exists or necessarily does not exist you have not modal, provided well, you yeah, believe it does not you, provide, you believe you believe it does not exist correct yes you've answered that question 50 times you believe right. it does not exist now when i asked you for a falsifier you said you don't have one so you hold to this position that god does not exist irrationally very simple that's not irrational yes it is because you cannot falsify the position that you claim no, to it's, be false no it, yes it, it is. really isn't it is irrational because you can't you don't have a defense or a grounding or a justification of your position that would necessarily follow no. from it, which is required because again we're talking about that which is necessarily exists or necessarily does not exist. Do you think it's irrational? J Robin, do you think it's irrational? It's not a possibility. It's not a possibility. I'm speaking. J Robin. It's not a possibility. Yeah, no, you've, d you've done enough talking. I want to hear what Tom has not to say. Not a non-zero. J Robin, do you think it's irrational? This is my channel. I want to hear what Tom has to say. Not J Robin, wrong. do you think it's irrational if if I told you that the sun is going to come up tomorrow? Okay, I'm gonna finish. I'm gonna finish making my point. So we're gonna we're talking about not not we're not talking. That's about That's that not ask, answering we're not questions. About we were talking about Tom? contingency. Yep. We're not talking about a good. contingency that is dependent upon something else, and that you know it may you know has a fifty percent chance of existing, sixty percent chance of existing, seventy percent chance, and thirty percent are you know on the respective other side. That's not what we're talking about here. So you cannot provide a falsifier 
necessary falsifier for this framework, this metaphysical framework. But yet you hold that it doesn't exist. That's what you hold to. So, <laughs> do you think it's rational to think the sun comes up tomorrow, J. Robin? Do you have a response to what I just said, Jefferson? Um, yeah, my uh, again, um, I am kind of curious to see if you're going to answer Tom's question. My guess is yeah, that I'm you are. I'm curious too. Um, because I have a but, feeling yeah. he more he actually thinks that it is rational to think that. But that doesn't necessarily follow that the sun will come up. So Jefferson, right? do you have an answer to my question? So it seems or do like... you have a response to my statement? Uh, again, at this point, you're kind of repeating a lot of claims. So let me let me repeat and then Well, it doesn't feel like you, you have really a rebuttal. I mean, I've just been making the same claim. I'm waiting to hear Hang on. You ever... Hang... Yeah, yeah, or yeah, if stop, you're just stop. gonna accept what I'm saying. Stop, stop. That's what please. I'm saying it's Knock it off. I'm gonna go on. I'm or... gonna go on for a minute. All right. You're gonna give me about a minute. Hey, Ron, so here's how what sweaty I... are you right now, by the way? Well, here. I'm just waiting to hear. I'm just waiting to hear something <laughs> substantive for once. <laughs> That's an interesting question that I would also like an answer to. Um, so yeah, this isn't this isn't really this, hard, actually. It's not. This, this is not hard showing. No, it, very rational. Well, it, it is hard, hard when the, it is hard when I mean the, when it does it does make it harder when somebody's being completely and utterly evasive. But it's not it's not something I haven't dealt with before. So do you have a defense? Do you have a rational? I asked you, you for to answers to clarifying questions, and you refused to give them. And you're accusing me of being no. I gave, I gave enough clarification, and you're you're trying to play this game because you don't want to. You want to escape the implications of what's happening here. No, so I don't. You don't need, you don't need clarification well, because you've, oh, done this, no, no. you've done this. Actually, you've done this. You're pretending like you've just not walked into this into this stage. You know, new. You've never had these kind of conversations before. I'm, I'm not. I'm not falling for your for your game here. I'm not going to play your game. You know what I'm asking you. You know. You know what I mean. You know the. You know the questions I'm asking. You've been accustomed. You've been accustomed to these questions. So why don't you just answer them rationally instead of instead of evading and dodging? Um, I've I've attempted to before, and I attempted to before in the past. Okay, so then came, so then you accept you that you're being in, irrational then. No, I don't. Okay, then what's your, what's your what's your what's your rebuttal you to what I'm saying? That? What's your well then what's well, your, well I haven't heard a rebuttal to what I'm saying. Well, here, so what's here's, your rebuttal to, to me saying that you're being irrational in my analysis? Are you going to let me answer to, well, on I'm, my own? I'm going to I'm going to make sure you know what you're answering. Are you going to let I, me I, answer? What is it going to be? Yes, I will. Shit. Yes, I will. I just want to make sure that you understand what you're responding to. Okay. What What we're am talking I about? When we're talking about the God position, we're not talking about some sort of a contingency that that you know it has a 50 50 chance or a non-zero basically on both sides of it might existing might not existing it's either going to necessarily exist or necessarily not exist okay that's what we're talking about when it comes to metaphysical frameworks where there's some sort of a necessity or a foundation to reality now i've just posited one uh, i've called it god because it's a mind and okay. you don't have a necessary falsifier for it so you you're arbitrarily deciding that you wanted to reject the God position without any actual falsifier that's going to negate that this being exists. That's well, that's, that's, you that's, being, that's, ra that's irrational. Uh, okay, so let you me, know what's funny about this, Jefferson, is that um, he actually thinks that the God of Christianity institutes and upholds all possibility and impossibility. But and so God is not contingent on anything, but. If he institutes all possibility and impossibility, what about the possibility that he exists? Who's upholding that? Him? Yeah, that was just a boneheaded question. Yeah. So Jefferson, do you have an answer to what he just said? Or do you have a rebuttal to what he just said? I was actually going to go on for a little bit, yeah. Um, so yeah, here's, so when this initially started, and do not interrupt, when this started out, you wanted to, you asked the basic question, why is it that there is no God? And then when I pressed you for details on that, you were slow to talk about that, but you wanted to talk about an ultimate mind that is timeless and transcendent. All right. So we've got something poorly defined, an entity of a sort. Now you've laid it out and you've, you've ex expanded the boundaries of this. It is the uh, the foundation for all metaphysics, it sounds like it's the grounding for all rational thought, the origin of everything in reality, and the sus sustenance of all those things. In did I not say that in the beginning when I said it was ultimate? Did I, was I'm, that not I'm, clear? I mean, well, have you never had this conversation before? Why are you playing? Why are you playing dumb like you've never heard this before? I want to you make sure know, that you know what ultimate means. You know what it means, and I explained it in this conversation numerous times. Ultimate so not, can be used as are this you going to? I defined I it. Need I, you look, to be patient, look, I defined. Um, I defined ultimate already. I've defined it multiple times. I said that everything, everything, literally. I'm, if you don't know I'm what everything means, it's not my problem. I'm but attempting everything to steal man. 
Okay. I'm attempting to steal them. No, you're, you're also representing it as me being unclear in the beginning when I've defined my terms already, originally. And it's not like you're, you're new to these conversations either. Oh. If you were new to these conversations, I would be a little bit more understanding, but I'm not going to play the game by of you, of you pretending like you don't understand what's going on. You're not going to play the game. And yet here no. you are. No, so I'm not going to play the game of you pretending like you're not understanding. I, I'm calling it out right now. That's not, I already uh, look, understand. Look, I'll, I'll tell you, you this right fully, now. You understand fully what's going I've been, on. Hang so, on. No. No, you're not gonna. You're not gonna. No, you're not gonna volunteer me how how um, my brain works. I've been listening to guys like okay, you. Okay, so do you have a? So Tony, do you do you accept or uh, do you have Jay a rebuttal Robin, to I've my got a, statement? I've, I'm trying to. I'm trying to present an opinion. And last time I checked, this is my show, so I'm going to actually finish saying this. Nonetheless, this is embarrassing for you. Then I'm sorry. You don't I don't have a rational care if you think position. it's embarrassing. I don't care. Of what course you, you don't. You think that it's embarrassing. Of course you this don't. Is, this is my issue. So for years, I've been listening to arguments like this from lots of different preceptors, and many of them will try to tell people that you know what I mean when I say word A, B, or C. And then oftentimes in the course of those same exact conversations, someone will end up saying something about a term like foundational or ultimate or transcendent or timeless, eternal, whatever. Pick hey, did, a I word. Tell, did I not tell you what ultimate meant at the beginning of the conversation? Did we, no, did we you, not establish that? No, okay, you just that's, said, that's a lie. No, you, that's just, a lie. you just said ultimate mind. That's a first. lie. No, I, okay. And then I said, you did and, not, I, also, you did and not, I also said, no, that's, you did that's not. Break no, it down. I did, okay, literally within the, the 30 seconds of me saying ultimate, I had described what ultimate meant. I think he said, okay. he at least, at the very all things, least, he I defined said all things fundamental all things, and he said, said all ultimate things, sense that means the I said same that thing. all things derive and depend upon. I said that within yeah. the first 30, 30 seconds of me saying you ultimate. Said, you said that you've did. been slowly, yeah, you've been, I agree, you've been slowly kind of unpacking. Okay, so then the don't pretend like you don't understand these definitions. I, I didn't say it like I like I know what you know what I mean. I defined the term ultimate. Okay. And then for this for the sake of me asking you how do you defend God, we've had this we had this conversation literally last week. And you you tried to pre present an argument back it then. Wasn't and last I, week, and I, I made was it sick last week. Well it was it was a while ago. Whatever whatever whatever, whatever, whatever time it was, week. whatever time it was, it was two weeks ago probably that I asked you and you you tried to pre present an argument. So you know what I was asking then. You know what I'm asking. No, now. I wasn't trying to present an argument. I was trying to give you my reason. Well, I told you, you I told you to argument. present an argument. I told you Right. I told now you to present an now argument. Now you're getting it right. You're exactly right. You you demanded an argument and I told yes, you I was And that's to... the same thing I'm doing now. So do you so let's be clear. We've established now that you don't have one. You don't have a falsifier, correct? I, I don't have a falsifying argument against the existence of the God you're Good. talking then, about. Then your, then your denial of God is arbitrary and no, irrational. It's not. Yes, I didn't, it is. Because, I, didn't, because, I didn't make that as a statement. Because God is in the category that of that which question. even necessarily does exist and necessarily does not exist. So how did you rule out God if you don't have a falsifier for him? How did you rule him out? How did you is rule that out? arbitrary? Or Did not? you have a do you have a falsifier for ruling out unicorns, Santa Claus? I'd like an, so this is the typical other things evasion. that you this would rule out evasion that we get. This is the typical evasion that we get from atheists. No, no, Why no, don't no. You just no. Answer Hang my on. question. I, we're not talking I, about unicorns. Yeah, right? I'm trying to I'm trying to answer your question, but you need to let me actually get a before you accuse this. Of no, you can answer the question. Stop it. Instead before of you accuse questions. it of being a cliche, stop doing that. Let me answer my question on my show. If there, you can't falsify a concept as broad as the one that you're talking about. The fact that you're shifting the burden onto non-believers is if your position is the rational one just, just from the jump, because this thing, because of some kind of hack, you know, hacky connection to an ontological argument, well, I, can ima I can't imagine anything better than this, therefore it must be true. This being therefore exists. Ha, atheist. Yeah, it has, no, it has nothing way. to do with what we're talking you about. Tell that's, me how that's, it's that's such a poor, that's such a poor representation of what's going no, on. I'm right talking now. about I'm, the motivations I'm, kind I'm of behind baffled. it. No, I'm baffled. I'm baffled that you're giving such a poor. I wasn't done explaining my position yet. Well, right? I'd like to stop you because you're humiliating yourself. You why need to you be less explain? concerned. Why don't you just explain? Why stop it. You need to be less. Why don't you just explain to us why you're being irrational? And arbitrary. Why don't you explain that to us? How so, would I? How if I was? How would I explain it? Well, I don't know. Are you are you accepting? First, first we need, first we need, first we need to understand. You and I have agreed well, on a question. First, first we need to understand. Are you being? Do you understand that you're being irrational before we understand the motives behind it? No, right, I do not believe that your, I'm being irrational. Or you don't believe you're being arbitrary. I believe I'm being. I I understand that you're. So then you. So then you. So then you. So then you must have a falsifier for God because God either necessarily exists. There's no. Because you're you're trying to again approach this probabilistically as though that is a relevant, uh, it's, you know, it's not. critique or analysis of the God position when it's not. That's you're, not probabilistic, the, but 
you did. You said that it's distinguishable and that I'm going to approach it, you know, because, you know, the same way that it doesn't exist because, you know, it's most likely the case it's 50 50. You literally said it's a 50 50 chance. It's like it's just as likely of it existing that as it not existing. That's literally what you just said. Definitionally is a concept. That's not probabilistic. I'm just okay. talking about the yeah. way it was defined. That's, that's what, well, listen, that's what everyone here understood you to me. Okay. That you said it was is just it? as like Tom, you, is that what you thought I you, meant? You told me that it's just as likely for it to exist as for it not to exist. That's what you told me. That's what right. I understood at least. Okay. So Tom, I'm gonna I'll speak for myself. So, so look, look. J. Rock was talking so fast. I, I don't that's know. What, just... That's what I understood you to say. Okay. So if that's not Tom's what you're saying, a... if that's Tom, not are what you're saying, you a little baked right now. <laughs> if that's not no, what you're saying, I'm... if that's I'm... not what you're saying, I got J. Robin fatigue. If that's not what you're saying, I'd love to hear your your falsifier because again, we're talking about God as that which is necessary, the necessary metaphysical uh, precondition. So, do you have a falsifier that now that you're now able to give me because that, that's going to be required if you're not being arbitrary. Right, but a necessary precondition, that'd be just the same thing as saying a metaphysic, right? Yeah, God is in the definition, God is in the category of a metaphysical framework. Or like God constitutes the 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 uh, the creator-creature distinction, or the creator-creation distinction, okay? Now, you've chosen to deny that position. I want to know, if you're not being arbitrary, you should have a falsifier for it, because God either well, necessarily I, exists, or necessarily does not exist. And he does not coexist, by the way, by definition. He would not coexist with another metaphysical framework that is not himself. So, do you have a falsifier for God? Uh, in in what sense? You don't know what it means to be a falsifier. No, I'm wondering what you're looking for. I'm wondering if you're you know looking what I'm for... looking for, Jefferson. I'm not. I told you. I already told you. I'm not going to play this game. Do you have a falsifier for God? Whatever you give, that needs to be. Therefore, God does not exist. Okay, well, I, I guess it would depend on you. Do you believe that God is all good? I'm asking you with a question to be defended. Right, and I'm trying to find out. I don't know if this is a falsifier for you. I mean, he's only given like two properties, right? It's a mind and it's ultimate. I mean, I guess that's all yeah, you that's have a general, to That's all you need to, that's all, that's all that's necessary here because you are a global atheist. And we're talking about any conception of God. So even if I, even if I told you that I believe in a in a benevolent God, a morally perfect God, that's not what that you told Pine Creek. I mean, I don't. I, even I know. I'm, I'm telling you. I gave. I, listen, if you were listening, I I would you would have heard me what I just said. I said even if I had told you that, it wouldn't matter because you're a global atheist. So you'd have to still reject the notions of God that are not malevolent because you believe that they don't exist. So me answering that question is irrelevant. All you need to know is the basic, general definition to go off of, which is that an ultimate mind. Yeah, so okay. Jefferson, since you so only Jefferson, got you have, like you have a, since you, have you only got fire? like two properties, like the only way that you can show that this necessarily is not possible is to find a contradiction between the only two properties that you've been given. So that it's an ultimate mind and that it's timeless and no, that it's trans it's that ultimate, means... comma, and a mind. Yeah, but, but at that definition, I don't know what you're talking about. So property one is ultimate, ultimate I property two is as a mind. I don't see a contradiction. I, I told things. you what ultimate means. So thank you, Tom Rabbit's realizing that this is really quickly going going downhill for you. Realizing. Um, so yeah. Okay. Going downhill. So, this is just you're spiraling now out of control because you don't have a rational position. I like how he provides commentary for his own performance. <laughs> yeah, you it's, are. It's really you cool. Are. Look, you don't have a, you don't have a rational defense of your position. Go, do you have a do you well, so, look i'm just gonna well, ask you, you I, won't, rational, so look, I won't i won't i won't i won't inject my own thing into it do you have a falsifier for this being because you're saying you're not being irrational so i have to keep asking this question you're not being arbitrary so apparently you do have a falsifier so do you have mm -hmm. a falsifier that you're willing to present right now yeah but i was wondering i don't know Good, that give you it. Would actually... okay so one of the one of the necessary properties for this being right um is that it is all good or you know, perfectly moral and so. No, no, he only gave you two properties. No, that's not what I told you. I didn't tell you that God was all good. I said that. For the the remember, the Jefferson. The only two properties you have to find a contradiction, according to J. Robbins, God, right, is property one, it's a mind. Property two, it's ultimate. That's that's all you. If you're saying if you're going to stick with like this is impossible, there's a contradiction here. That's all the properties that Jay Robinson is presenting. This this particular concept, you only get two properties. I personally don't see a contradiction with those two properties, and I don't really who cares if I mean, so what? Yeah, I would go right back, uh, but I I mean that seems to be where he's frustrated though. That's where I would just reject the premise. I'm not um, frustrated at all, actually. 
this is actually good to realize that you're you're coming to the conclusion that you're being arbitrary and irrational. Why would I be frustrated with that? The uh, well, I don't know why you would or wouldn't. No, I'm not frustrated at all. You, I'm actually, you this, kept is actually, this is actually very good. Oh, no. So, you kept do you, rejecting do you, do you, it's not that you're being arbitrary. Well, I, I mean, if, if yeah, if you're sticking to the only those two properties in terms of just the mind and, and, and that it being ultimate, like I said before, um, if if someone were to just ask me, like, I think kind of how you got in this with with Pine Creek, you got an immaterial mind uh, that is uh, somehow ultimate, but is also spaceless, timeless and immaterial. OK, I don't know that those properties as stated in that set contradict create some kind of necessary contradiction. However, I also don't see how those properties actually really define anything worth defining. That's a premise that I can just kind of reject out of hand. Arbitrarily reject out of hand, you mean? Unless you can present an argument as to why those those that collection of properties is necessary. I don't need to present anything. You're the one that's coming to me with the claim that needs to be defended, and we now establish that you don't have a defense to your position. So it's arbitrary and irrational. So what I what I what I'm going to tell you is that this is par for the course with all the atheists. That this is exactly what the Book of Romans says. That all people, that all atheists, uh, people who choose to deny really anyone who chooses to deny God is 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 choosing to do so out of their own autonomy, out of their the will to to reject to rebel, and to reject God's revelation. And I'd, I'd urge you to uh, to read the Bible and to turn from. But I have read I have read the Bible. Well, then I'd urge you to to turn from the rebellion if you if you understand what you read if you I read did. it um good well then I would, I would urge you to turn from the rebellion that's what i do well if, do. Yeah, what but if that I is told... your proprietary definition of god so almost no one else uses that so i mean under j robin no, this isn't so so tom again maybe you're not understanding i'm not coming here to talk about what i believe here because if i was i would be talking yeah about you made that god. you made that i'm clear. coming here i'm coming here to ask him about his belief Right. Okay. So I can go, I can come to him with any definition. Oh, it doesn't even have wait, to be wait, this wait. definition. Ask, oh, you want to know about his be belief, but you're you're yes. forcing him to yeah, use so your so definition. Why, why are you over talking? Why are you over talking? Right. If no, because his he believes that this being doesn't exist. So that's his it's his belief. Yes. Right. As, as posited so, by so you. So I'm asking. No, but you're <laughs> calling it. Doesn't, it doesn't, I don't understand why that's so matter. hard. It doesn't matter. Okay. What I'm coming to you with, if your belief is going to be either affirmative or the negation. I'm going to address your belief either way. So your belief is that it doesn't exist. So I came here to see if you were being rational, if you're being consistent, and it seems like you're being arbitrary and irrational. So I've come here to, I did what I came here to do. Uh, so now for the second time in the row, we've seen. Yeah, that but when he answers the question, I don't, and he says and something like, I don't believe any gods, he doesn't, he doesn't use. He didn't say, I don't believe in any God. He didn't say, he said, I believe that this being does not exist. And when we, probe deeper right. and right. realize that that's an arbitrary and irrational conclusion to draw to. So thank you very much, Jefferson. Yeah, but he's not using point. your definition of God. That's evidenced by him. He was just talking about it. Having, no, he, like... he was because I, I asked him to respond to it and he did use uh, it. No, so I yes, mean, I, yes, I was following I was following the concept. I mean, if, if the concept of God is the one that he wants to talk about, the, the problem that I would have, though, is like now because he got into his sermon. Right. So like, OK, so I've read the Bible and I don't think that the God that you're talking about exists, but um, I am inclined to think that if Jesus, right, given his teachings, if there was something supernatural about him and there were there was somehow some kind of uh, retribution required to reconcile mankind with the supernatural, with the, you know, the sublime God, whatever you want to call it. And Jesus provided for that. If I reach the conclusion, right, based on my reading and my understanding of the Bible, that Jesus did provide that and through his faith reconciled his creation with himself. Then everybody saved. Would you accept me as a brother of Christ? I didn't. I didn't catch the last part of what you said. Can you repeat that last part? If the conclusion that I reached reading the New Testament was that Jesus, um, whether I'm totally convinced in the properties of the God that you're laying out or not, I, whether it's ultimate or any of that other kind of stuff, I, you know, whatever. But let's say that I'm inclined to think that Jesus might have something supernatural going on, given the the stories about him. And let's say that I believe that he did die believing that mankind needed to be um, they, it needed to be reconciled with uh, the sublime, with the creator, with nature, with you know whatever you want to go with God. 
And through Jesus's faithfulness and his sacrifice and his resurrection, he provides for that. And so I reached the conclusion that, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm inclined to think that that's possible. Um, and if it's possible, I think that every, absolutely everyone is saved. Would you be inclined to accept me as a brother in Christ? Uh, no, because, well, what it takes to be a Christian is to have faith in Jesus Christ. Um, if you're trying to appeal to universalism, that, that would be heresy. That's false. And I don't so think if, that you have you to were... have faith in Jesus Christ. I think that you have to okay, understand well then, then that then Jesus be... had faith in us. So then the answer would be no to your question. Okay, then you have the answer to mine then. I mean, if if I read the Bible and I reach those conclusions, I did what you said. I've read the Bible many times. I've studied it. And the closest that I can get to it is to believe in God, or at least believe in Jesus as a possible hypothetical, right? It might be the case that he was either a prophet or maybe even God incarnate, right? But I don't believe it balls to bones. But I also think that if that thing sacrificed itself for the sins of all mankind, that it probably, if it could die for the sins of one person, um, and it, and then it follows that that being, given its might, it could die for the sins of every person, regardless of whether or not they ask for it. I think that when you Christians run around telling each other that you have to have faith in Jesus, you're making the religion about yourself and less about Jesus. Well, if, you, if, you go by off of, if you go by off of what Jesus actually said, he said you, must, you, need, to be, you need to believe in him. But is that, that's not what... But that's maybe not what Jesus said, right? Those stories were written by people many years after his teachings were done. No, it was they written by it. Yes, but I mean, for one, it seems like you're going to be self-refuting because where did you get the idea of Jesus anyways? And then anything you're appealing to is just going to be your own imagination because that's what you're talking about isn't written anywhere aside from mm -hmm. maybe one of the you know apocrypha, which I don't I don't even believe the apocrypha teach, teach that anyway. I could be wrong. No, just kind of reading between read the lines them, between. What's but that's not what anything. It's not what anything in the Bible says at all. So, D does the Bible say in anything? Do you believe that the Bible is a consistent narrative from Gen uh, Genesis to Revelation? Yes. Okay, then then we can stop talking because you don't know how to read the Bible. Okay, well, if, if you want to go through a, an in-depth study about it, then you can. But um, I, I, I don't, don't think, think look, you'd agree bottom with line, where... Bottom line, I came here to do it. I, came, I did what I came here to do. And uh, I appreciate you for your time. And you didn't do it. Um, no, you I didn't. didn't. You, you admitted that your position is arbitrary. So I, I did mean, not. That's, that's all I so your position is not arbitrary. It isn't. So then you do have a falsifier for God. Mm. Again, I think that you're blowing that up a bit too much. No, no, I'll explain. So, look, maybe you don't understand why I'm saying. No, that. I'd it's rather you not explain it to me. It sounded like if, you were if ready. You're, to go. If you don't have, if you don't have a falsifier God, for the position, me. then your position is arbitrary. Okay, because no, God either that, necessarily. No, no. I'll explain no, no, it to you. No. I'll explain it to you. I'll explain what it to about you something unfalsifiable? I'll, Remember I'll the question that why. Tom asked you about the sun? Yeah, but that you have an answer. So look, so look, this is the this is the thing. The fact that I don't answer Tom's question doesn't mean he asked a good question. It just means I'm ignoring his question because I'm not talking about that. I'm right curious and, about and, the and, and, I'm and, curious and, to and response. 50 to 90% of the time, okay, okay, he's asking. Hang on. I'm going to interrupt you right there because you've been interrupting me a shitload. Tom a Rabbit is question. also a guest on my channel, right? So if I'm interested in the question that he asked, regardless of whether or not it's good or not, I was curious to hear what your response to his question was. Now, you might think it's just crap or whatever, but that hasn't changed the fact that most of the times we ask you questions, you dodge. No, most time you ask me questions is when I've, when I've asked a question first and there hasn't been an answer provided and we haven't gotten resolution. Yeah, you, all all okay. we've done is answer questions. No, yeah, I've really. been answering not questions really. for most of this time. Really, the, except you're right. I will fact, concede this, this that I did ask a lot of clarifying dodged. questions. You've dodged this last question you're asking right now. So case of I, right? We already went over the falsification. Thing. How many I questions have you answered, Jay Robin? Uh, that's what, I just answered a slew of questions just now. Okay, so I, I don't, um, I so, do not so, a slew. Yes. So you, oh, uh, that's true about his positions on the Bible, which are very vanilla. Yeah. Um, well, you can ask, you can ask other questions too. But look, the bottom line is, yeah, I about make sure what's understand. the what's the contradiction? I want to understand. I want to understand. I want to understand how. Well, first, I want to make sure you understand what I what I mean when I talk about arbitrariness, because maybe that's where the disconnect is. The reason I'm saying your position is arbitrary. If you can't provide a falsifier, it's because of mm -hmm. what we're talking about when it comes to metaphysical frameworks. Right. What one framework, any any framework that's metaphysical, you know, when it comes to like a foundation or ultimate, is either going to necessarily be the case or not. And it's not going to be able to coexist by virtue of the law of excluded or law of non-contradiction 
with a yeah. with a negation of the metaphysical framework that it is. It's not going to be able to coexist. So when you hold that this that this framework is not true, when you hold to the negation of the framework, you're going to need to provide a rationale for why it's false. And that rationale is going to need to be a falsifier because it either necessarily is or necessarily is not. Okay. So ask so telling me a probabilistic, you know, uh kind of approach to it, giving me that kind of approach, it's not going to be adequate here. And well, so uh, if again, you can't, a, can't, appro- can't, a, prob- if you can't, a probabilistic approach is abduction. That's reasonable. That's logical. Not when it comes not so I just explained to you why that would not be adequate here, because what we give <laughs> as a falsifier for the metaphysic will have to be a either there's two positions here. It's either that it necessarily is or that it necessarily is not. There's no meta, uh, middle yeah, ground here. gibberish to me. That's not okay. Well, then if you don't understand, then I don't. I don't have to explain this to you. Uh, that that actually kind of seems a little bit like special pleading. No, it's not. I, this is this is not even. This is not just true for my position. This is true for Islam. This is true for any other foundational metaphysical position. Either that position, because it's going to ground even things like the laws of logic, things like uh, facts. What the facts are, connectivity between the facts, everything imaginable is going to be grounded by this ultimate metaphysical framework. So it's either it literally is going to either exist necessarily or necessarily not exist or necessarily not be be true. Okay, it's just it's just by virtue oh. of what it is. Okay, and so when so when you when I posit here to uh, uh, you know a, a potential framework to you and you cannot falsify it, then you don't have a you're being arbitrary in your reasoning. You haven't ruled it out, and but you still hold that it doesn't exist. It sounds like you might be too. So you, you, uh, so everything that exists exists necessarily. No, that's not what I said. I said the, that what the it, metaphysical what you, framework that, is is necessarily the case. Okay, so everything that everything that is contingent upon that framework does not exist necessarily. Could it, no, could it exist? There, there could be con- there are contingent. I don't understand your question. There are contingent facts. And there are necessary facts. Okay. Now, the now when we're talking about the the case of the metaphysical framework, it's either going to necessarily be the case or necessarily not be the case. Oh, what light is in my chat? By virtue of what it is, light get in here, man. Yeah, I mean, uh, as as far as I can tell, I mean, if you're, because I'm, I, I am. Jay Mike, get, how uh, are you? Is Jay Mike in here? <laughs> Enlightenist is is that what you mean? Oh, I, I don't think they're in my chat. They might be in yours. Oh, yeah, they're in my chat. Uh, yeah, so... Anyways, no. oh, okay. Well, I mean, look, if, there's, if, there's, if that was it, if that, if that was the, you know, if there's no other thing... No, I, I just... About, then. I, 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 like, again, I had told you before, I don't, I don't see how you're getting to this whole thing. Well, you, if, if I don't have a kind of logically deductive falsification for the God that you're positing, then my lack of belief in it or my, or my reasons for believing that it doesn't exist, it therefore, therefore follows that they are arbitrary and irrational. I don't get how you're getting there. Because it... Even, I explained this, even I explained this not five times. I explained this not five times, that whatever position that you're talking about, you're going to be addressing it as though it either necessarily does or necessarily does not exist. Okay. And so if you're going to approach it that it necessarily exists, you're going to need to give a rationale for that. If you're going to approach it that it necessarily does not exist, you're going to have to give a rationale for that as well. Now you haven't given a falsifier to entail the necessary non-existence of this metaphysical framework or the necessary non-actuality, whatever you want to call it, of this metaphysical framework. So then you're you're uh, you're holding to this position, your acceptance of this position is arbitrary by definition there's nothing really more for me to to break this right, down into the, smaller parts of it right but the being that you posited at the beginning it doesn't it like you're defining it as being necessary but you can't present any kind of connection that shows that necessity no you're i'm not defining i'm not defining merely ultimate. i'm not special pleading for this one being i'm saying that anything that is posited as a metaphysical framework if i say that the rock on the side of the road is ultimate then you're either gonna one one you're either gonna hold that it does exist you're going to hold that it doesn't exist and that's and you hold that it does no neutral, not as not as the ultimate no so i so there's no even so anything you posit as that you, you can't be neutral towards for one but i'm Secondly, not the one positing the frame you're positing the framework and look, they're not, not providing that's not that's not the point i'm making but you're this not providing you're not providing the 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 ju- necessary justification for how it is the case that that thing necessarily exists you're just telling me that it does and I didn't then tell demanding you it does. me to present a falsification for so what this whole time i never made a claim that it does 
I you don't believe that God exists. I do, but I never made the claim to you that it does. You need to respond in your own on your own ground. Why, why own would I? Why no? But I mean, at that point, then you're just presenting a premise that, again that I can just wave away off. Hand, I could okay? I could present people anything I want to. I could be an atheist asking you the same question. It doesn't it doesn't but change. If I, hang on, the, hang the on. If I just present you, if I just present you with some abstract concept, but don't ground it to an argument to demonstrate how it exists in the real world or interacts with reality. Look, as long anyway, as it's not a logical contradiction, just, I, I can respond to. I can respond to it any and I can respond to it as long as it's not some sort of a lot if, you, if you're not defining a, a square a triangle square circle or anything like a, you know logical contradiction then right. you should be able to you should be able to address it and that's i mean i'm able to do that i don't have to leave right, an argument just, to see that it actually does it, exist i'm not asking you to, to accept that it exists i'm asking you to defend its non-existence which is your position right but if i were if i were to if i were to conjure up a concept of of let's say you know cotton candy seahorses or something like that and then and okay. then told you this is a concept of of, of a thing out there uh, now what i want you to do is i want you to then uh and and then i just assume okay one of the things about these cotton candy seahorses uh for lack of a better better you know collection of words is that they have something to do with the underpinning of the of metaphysical framework of all of reality now i need you to provide me a falsification for why those things can't exist yeah i, I could do that yeah so okay how would one, you do it yeah so for for one it doesn't provide it just goes back to the whole transcendental reasoning again that we're looking at the necessary preconditions that god has for, for intelligibility no now, cotton, candy, the, cotton candy cotton candy seahorses if the no i'm saying i'm saying my position first and then can compare that to the cotton candy seahorse now if, the, if that okay. being that you're talking about doesn't so have you those are properties. positing that the god exists no i'm comparing it to with your position that a, yes with your position that a god yeah. exists but you just told me that you weren't positing that now no, you're changing I, that. Listen, I said I didn't posit that you in this discussion. I never yeah. made the claim to you that it existed. But in order because to falsify not relevant, it, because it's not relevant, let, let me okay. finish. Because that's not relevant to your defense of your position. I don't need to. I don't need to tell you my position. What if you defend yours? But there's nothing like, for you, me to defend if you haven't presented anything other than just a definition. I can present you a definition without claiming it exists. Did, did you not? Did you not just present me a definition without claiming it? Without claiming it exists? The cotton candy yes. seahorse. Good. So I, right. I can do the exact same thing to you. Which is, what I, I just, to, which is what right, I did so, to you, so, that you point, said it. But the point so is, it, I didn't Are you ask being you. arbitrary in no, your, in your rejection of my concept? Not at all. I was, I was in the middle of actually okay, explaining why was I? Didn't because why you don't have I? a falsifier for its existence. Yo, J-Rob, uh, send Enlighten the link, please. Um, okay, hold on one second. Or, or actually, I should ask. Jefferson, do you mind? I mean, you can. I do need to wrap this up because I am getting kind of tired. Yeah, uh, I'll... I'll, I'll um, well, I mean, I just... Look, we got to give Enlighten some airtime right just a little bit please no tom rapper's just going to use this again look i just came i came up here i already know he's going to record it so look i mean if i don't want to be slicks literally so streamed like, on two different youtube channels simultaneously yeah, no, i get it i get it yeah you're, you're, what a big brain on you that i got being, recorded you're being, Robin. you're being yeah no i mean honestly you're being opportunistic yeah, super I sleuth always, figure it out it's recorded man good job so Wait, tom so, you're recording this? So, anyways, <laughs> sorry. No, I, mean, I I'm not stating anything that I think is controversial or not obvious. Uh, it's obvious that it's happening. That's what I'm telling you. I'm saying it with such confidence that I I know it's obvious. Obviously. Um. Anyways, that's that's it. That's all I have to say. So. Thanks. Okay, thanks I didn't think. Well, man. Uh, yeah, we didn't get anywhere. So. Just yeah, in good. just in closing, yeah. uh, what's the contradiction with an atheism? It doesn't provide the necessary conditions for pre for intelligibility. That's not a oh, contradiction. Oh, no, no. I said the contradiction, yes, Jay Robin. Yes, it does. That's the contradiction. So it's, it's transcendental reasoning, right? So it would be either you could, you could say it's either premise one or typically transcendental reasoning would have. To appeal to transcendental reasoning, reasoning would be an external critique, so but say, a contradiction listen, would be listen, only shown listen, by an hey, internal listen, critique. Listen, so you're listen, already messing listen, up. Listen, Tom Rabbit, you got to listen. I'll tell no, you. You got to listen. So, for example, let's say, let's say this. Let's say we give an example of a transcendental argument here. Let's say something like. Flour is required for cake. A cake exists. It's premise two. Conclusion: There's flour, All right? And so a contradiction would be to say that um, if somebody wants to posit something, posit a scenario, a state of affairs where there is not flour but there is a cake, and cake still exists, and they accept the premises of the original argument, then that would be a contradiction. Did you really think that All was right? going to work on me? What? No, that's that's a contradiction. Now, no, it's not now, a contradiction because yes, under the yes, atheist, and I'll tell you exactly why it's not a contradiction. Contradiction, and and I'll explain it to like the two hundred plus people that are listening. Okay. 
What Jay Robin just provided was a transcendental okay, argument, which is under the God hypothesis, right? Now, under the atheism worldview, there is no God. So to appeal that to a God, it's relevant to say to that to say to say you don't hold to, to say that you don't hold to God me, is irrelevant. Me. If the Jay argument Robin, holds, then the not, argument holds. No, no, the only issue. Me. Stop on interrupting him. Let him so, finish his point. Thank you very much. So for him to do that is an explicit external critique. And when you're showing a contradiction, even Van Til says that it must be da done uh, to a worldview on its own terms. And there's nothing about atheism where there's a God posited. Yeah, that's, whether or not there's a God posited is irrelevant. If the first argument I gave to you stands, which is the most controversial part of it, then somebody who's an atheist would be contradicting the first argument, which would be the contradiction. The only the what what you'd have to do at that point That's is, an is give a critique, contradiction. Dude. And what you'd have to do yeah. at that point, let me finish. What you'd have to do at that point is to say, okay, then God does not provide the, the necessary preconditions. See, I can do this too. So view, so how is it a worldview that doesn't that doesn't do it? Now Thomas tried to do this multiple times in, in many different flavors, and it's failed multiple times. So okay, how is it that not God does not exist? How does it that not God exist? Uh -huh. How is it that uh, not God does not exist? It doesn't exist. Not God does not exist. Right, but you haven't shown that via a contradiction. Yes, yeah, which so is the, what so you the, the world, which, the world which, view, which the is world what you question, demanded. The world you view demanded question, of Jefferson Spatchcock. Hold on a second, for a sec, please. So do you not want me you to explain it to you? You demanded that of you demanded that of Jefferson Spatchcock, and me being objective, right? I even pointed out to Jefferson Spatchcock. In order to false, in order to show a contradiction, you need to do it on its own terms, which was the only two properties that you provided, right? It's got to be within your framework that you provide. Now, when it comes around to atheism, you need to provide, you, you need to find a contradiction within atheism. And under the atheism hypothesis, there is no God. So positing a god yeah. is not going to show a contradiction with atheism. No, then, then, then what you do is you do the same logical syllogism, present it, then we cash them out on both side by side, and it comes to it just happens to be the case that atheism is arbitrary and irrational, like we just demonstrated here. It just happens to be the case, that, right? That, I don't you think that's convenient. how. I don't I'll think that's wanna... how things should be done, J. Robin. No, that's exactly how it should be done. That's you exactly want to use a done. syllogism. That's, that's perfectly valid. That's perfectly you valid. You want to use a syllogism which concludes with God to falsify and show an internal contradiction in the hypothesis there is no God? Uh, if the syllogism is valid and sound, then yes. How would you prove that it was sound? You'd have to prove every premise. No, you was just, true. You just, well, there's only two premises, but yeah, it does go into multiple sub premises when it comes to the extended properties of God. And you can, you can substantiate that they are. Yes, I, that I do that all sound. the time. Yes. How? So for, well, we talk about, for example, that God is ultimate. I mean, you're that's, getting that's you're getting one, a, that's number one thing you're that we're kinda, talking about okay. here. You're kind of no. obliging him with going down this yeah, rabbit trail. I didn't I didn't realize he was going to go that get that. Well, I'm ready to. Do, I mean, honestly, I mean, people say that you don't present. I don't present the arguments. I do all the time. Um, no, you didn't. Yeah, you didn't I present realize, an argument I, that I, I'm, shows I was literally just about to do it now, and and now that I'm about to do it, you guys are telling me no. But, you know, it's fine. Okay, but I, you have one that's an internal critique. And like, I, I just told your friend Jay. I just gave Jay. I just told Jay. He's enlightened. Says oh, in the chat. Yeah, Why can't okay, you send me this. the link, yeah. Tom? You scared. I told your friend to send it, and then oh, I went out of my way to ask if it was okay if he can come in. I mean, come on, grow up, enlightened. But look, you didn't show a contradiction with atheism. You I failed. did actually. So no, you I failed. did. If if the so if the I'm argument I gave it. the first argument I gave is sound, then yeah, it would be a contradiction. The only the only issue is that you don't think it's sound. So I just have to present this. As no, sound no, no, no. Once no. I do Look, that, once I, I do don't that, know what you're not I understanding that, about this is really if it, clear. If I do that, that's if an, I do that, that's an then it's external a critique. It wouldn't be an external show... critique because he was yes, the person in that world. The person in the world no. would accept that too. If if it's a sound no. argument, if it's a sound argument, and we both accept logical you know, inference and syllogisms, then it would be an internal critique even on their grounds too. So that the issue is not the issue is that whether doesn't or not mean it has to be except if it's an issue, external critique, you can yeah, the but issue, if it's an external critique, you're not demonstrating the internal contradiction you said you could. Correct. You're Actually, reaching yeah, outside because if the, if the necessary if 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 the if no, the argument Robin, is sound, listen, if the argument is sound, right, then it means that the conclusion necessarily follows from the premises, right? 
Okay. What so it, yeah, in an external critique, how okay, is that listen, still effective? Listen. If it's logically necessary, then it would follow from the premises, whether or not the person's an atheist, right? Okay. So if they accept it, which of course they wouldn't, but I didn't if I ask you if you could give an argument. I asked you what's I, the so, contradiction. So the contradict. I'm explaining it to you because this is how this is how it would work. This is how even arguments aside from God work when it's when it comes to contradiction. There's something that is stated to be true, and a lot of times there is there is a you know there might be a deductive path or a chain of, of justification for it, and the person accepts that. Both people accept that. And then we move on from there. Now, in this case, we don't both accept that. So I have to accept, I have to show why it's sound. I have to demonstrate its soundness. Once I do that and they accept that, now if they don't accept that, then they're going to have to give a counter, a counter, a rebuttal to that. They're going to have to give a no. counter argument. Hey, Robin, first of all, yes they, yes, they would. First of all, the only thing that you really have to get to is validity, right? Getting to soundness. Well, it would have to be soundness too. Because because we're trying to falsify. Well, I, I, the again, system. I'm trying to trying to throw you a little bit of a rope here before Tom goes after you again. But um, the well, he's no, already the, done. The, he doesn't know yeah, it though. Yeah, this this is just this is sad. Um, and and I don't really have the patience to to break it down because this is good. This is oh wait, go I know how to, I know how I know what I'm supposed to say. Jay Robin. Uh, 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 it's it's really embarrassing. Yeah, are you uh, you should be really embarrassed right now, okay? Tom, tell me how I humiliated myself so, again. Oh, well, you already know. You already know how it happened. No, I didn't ask you. I asked Tom. I wanted well, Tom to explain to me how how I humiliated. Know. Anyway, let's let's wrap it up. It's but I think the, I think the link should be the link should be in the link should be in the live stream. I'm looking here. It's in the live stream. Is the not able to put it in the live stream? I didn't put so, it in the live stream. I see it. I see it pinned right here. It's oh, in. Well, it's then, pinned. In, it's been pinned in. My, well, my then enlighten is just pretty. inept. I'm sorry. I mean, like, what can we say? I mean, yeah. I don't. I don't. I want to. I want to talk to a few yeah, other people that to, have so, been waiting. So, yeah, this. Look, look. I understand that you're you're very furious at him for you know, look, making all the atheists look bad. I understand that. But you didn't. You didn't is make. It, is he the, talking to me? No, I'm talking. No, I'm talking about enlighten. I know that you're. I know that you I know that oh. enlighten made you very furious. I love enlighten. He's great. Yeah. Okay. No, I can tell that he makes you very furious. I know. Oh, okay. I want him anyways. to come in. I'm, I'm wait. We're all literally waiting for him to come in, and we're like, we want to extract uh, in my content. Yeah, I'm not gonna wait anymore. Sorry, Tom, but I'm not gonna wait anymore. I'm gonna, I'm gonna wrap this up, and I'm gonna bring in a few other people to talk to, and probably take this off stage, but okay. uh, all right, all right. take this off live because I can only stay up for a little while. I got work in the morning. Well, Jay Robin, Nothing. you know, it's nice you stopping by. Um, thanks, you thanks for, weren't able for to me. show a contradiction with atheism. Well, Maybe next time. Maybe no, next I did, time. and I mean, look, thanks, thanks for being shown to be uh, completely and utterly arbitrary. Oh wow, look at all these but, people. Oh you know, wow, Jay Robbins really yeah. gonna leave now. There's no way he's staying. I've talked to, I've talked to like fifty percent of these people. Well, now it's getting. Does that? Does anybody? Hold on a sec. If anyone was <laughs> listening to him give the contradiction within atheism, did anybody he hear didn't. his quote, quote contradiction? He didn't. I don't think he knows what a contradiction is. All he gave was like a, like a conceptual argument. Or what Hold on a second. Okay, you, you wait in. Does any, argument, I wanna... but not a contradiction. No, no, no. Ask yourself, Josh. Anybody else, just tell yeah, so me. Doesn't know, you, don't, you, you don't know what a contradiction, contradiction. is. I explained it already. I don't know. He, 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 he never gave a contradiction. Though. So uh, maybe, let, me just, let me just make sure. Let me just be clear. All of you guys are atheists, right? I mean, I think, that's, I think that's a relevant. I think that's a relevant. I, I think that in uh, order to understand, right? I'm an atheist. Tom is an agnostic. Right. Uh, Ay is an agnostic. Right. Right. And the atheist is an atheist. Uh, I'm an atheist. An atheist. Uh, all of everyone's here is an atheist. Anybody here? And, and, they're all saying, and they're all saying I didn't provide a contradiction. I'm not a global okay. anything. Audio is not working. Well, no, you're, you're yeah. yeah, you you didn't provide a contradiction. Okay. Your audio is working, Jay, but it's a little. It's well, a little did, I, did anybody I disagree with me? Tom has asked me to speak to Jay Robin before, like. What what is he saying that the contradiction is? I don't know. I said he gave it, the I transcendent. That is, he, he, okay, I'll, you that I'll give it to you. It would, it would violate the transcendental argument. So, for example, I gave an example with the cake earlier. So, if look, if you were listening, this is great. I can't believe this is happening. Okay, if you were listening, you would have heard the contradiction already. I, so, I gave an analogy here. That that might be true reasonable. for the record. I wasn't actually here listening the whole time. So, okay, you so might then, actually be right. So let's let's say, for example, that if flour. Let's say premise one, flour is required to make a cake. Premise two, a cake exists. And the conclusion is that there's flour, right? 
Now, if you accept that as the, as, as true, required to make a cake. That is, if that is a if that is a sound argument, okay. And somebody comes forward and says that I don't have flour. Flour does not exist. Period in the world. I have a cake. Or you know, so yeah. Oh, no. oh my God! Seriously, I don't have, I don't have flour, <laughs> and I have a cake, right? Then that would be a contradiction with. Yes, based the based argument. on if but, it is the case that all oh, cakes must right. be made of flour. Okay. Of course, of Maybe. course. Okay. And so, if okay it, if but, the point, but the point is that yeah. if the argument is sound and if it logically follows, and the person believes that the cake if exists, if it's sound, it logically accent, is valid and it's it, it, true. That's what sound is. Oh my God! You don't have to I say know, valid right, and okay, sound. Okay, a sound okay, argument is true. Let's not get stuck on that. Yeah, he's not going to be here for very much longer. Don't. Yeah, I want to ask this guy a thing or two. So like, so I presented just the contradiction. To, uh, yeah, yeah, that's what I was trying to understand. Yes, so, that was so a contradiction. okay, one second, yeah. So yeah, I did want to understand what the contradiction is. So just it sounded like you were giving like an inference that leads to a contradiction, but that's a <laughs> so little the contradiction different. would be premise one and not premise one what? essentially. Okay, yeah, and what's what's that premise? We premise one is that flower exists and not flower exists. This is supposed okay, to be so, one. and and this is a contradiction that's entailed on atheism, presumably. Well, it would be the case that in the atheism that they don't have the preconditions for intelligibility. Like the cake is the pre. Like what the is that? Oh, it's almost. Oh, no, you it's... mean flour and and cake are stand-ins for something else? Is it maybe? I just I God? told you that it was. I, like, is, Wait, that, is that is that okay, not? Okay, one, one second, one second, one second. I feel like we're going down like five lines. I just want to talk. To okay, let's let oh. ask yourself do this. Like, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I'll, or someone else can just if I want to talk to him, just let me talk for like a minute or two, and then go ahead. Um, yeah, no, cut me off. Go ahead. Yeah, okay. So, I yeah, I want to understand. I guess a what the contradiction is. So you said it's it's whatever the proposition is in premise one that's true and not true. I'm still not sure what that proposition is. Is that that flower, is that flour flour exists cake? and that is flour is is necessary for for a cake? Okay, and is what you're saying that on atheism that contradiction is entailed? No, no, no. I was giving, I was using that argument as an analogy as for the transcendental argument for God. I said that from the onset that I'm using that as an analogy, but to make it clear, this is, this is to the God position, but this is just as an analogy to make everyone understand it clearly. Okay. If flour is necessary for a cake and we have a cake and the conclusion is that there's flour. Okay. Now, if we assume that there's a cake, somebody comes forward telling me that there's a cake and there's, and there's no flour there then they're violating the first argument. If the first argument is sound, then they're violating the first argument, that would be a contradiction. Because then they're, okay, saying so flower, then they're saying that flour is not necessary for a cake, essentially, which would be a violation of the so premise of the is, argument. So is this a contradiction that's supposed to be entailed if theism is false? Yeah, yes. Okay, that's so- The worldview that's if, being presented does not necessary, have the necessary preconditions for intelligibility, yes. So yeah, so if theism is false, then we get to this contradiction that flour is required to make a cake, and it's not the case that flour is required to make a cake. Yeah, that would be the case if if so. The point is that of course it's not true, but if you accept the first argument as, as sound, then you cannot hold that there is no flour or that flour is not required to make a cake. Yeah, yeah. Let me repeat your view back to you, so you tell me if I'm understanding you right. Um, just to to be clear, like you're saying you're trying to run some kind of reductio, right? You're going, if we accept some set of premises, we can derive a contradiction. Then we say, okay, well, one of the premises has to be a problem, right? It's like it's like a reductio that you're trying to do. That's the idea, right? Yes, this isn't very hard either. I don't know why yeah. this is such a controversial thing either. Well, it's not hard. I, the, the idea of a reductio isn't, isn't really the problem. So like, I understand the kind of thing that you want to do. You want to say that if we start from this proposition that theism is false, then we can derive this contradiction that flour is required to make a cake, and it's not the case that flour is required to make a cake. The contradiction is not acceptable, so we have to give up one of the premises, and presumably the premise that we're going to give up is the premise that theism is false, right? Yes. Okay, so what I want is the actual inference that goes from the proposition that theism is false to the... Uh, contradiction that flower because if, if we accept can if, I, sorry, if the first thing is true if the first argument okay. is true i was just just let me finish what i was saying so just i just want to be totally clear what i'm asking for i'm happy to hear what you have to say so yeah so we need to go from a premise that is the proposition uh theism is false to a conclusion that's got the proposition flour is required to make a cake and it's not the case that flour is required to make a cake 
that's that's the deduction that I would want to see. If the first argument is sound, then the second argument is 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 false, or the when second state false. of affairs cannot be the case. If when, the when second you... if the second state of affairs is actual, then the first argument cannot be sound. I'm just going to cut in because I'm not following. I'm just asking for some clarity here. So when you're when you're referring to like the first argument, the second argument, the first state of affairs, the second state of affairs, I, I don't have all that in my head right now. What I have written down is premise one: flour is required to make a cake, and premise two: a cake exists. The, the second part, the second argument or second state of affairs. So the first, that's the one you're talking about, the first one. The second one is where they say that the, the cake exists without the flour. Now, both of those cannot be true at the same time. Only one of them is true. And so whatever one we can demonstrate to be true would be the negation of the other state of affairs. Very simple. But keep, keep in mind that the premise that we need to start with isn't something like flour is required to make a cake. The premise that you think we can derive a contradiction from is theism is false. So what we need is the inference that moves from that proposition to the contradiction. I don't I don't know why you're not understanding what I'm telling you. Um, I think he I'm is. I think you're either. not understanding what he's asking you because you don't actually know how to provide what it is. Thank you. Thank you, so, uh, one, thank you. For, thank you. For one, your input, one, yeah. one sec. I don't I mean, here, I don't I don't want to hog it. So when someone else wants to, like, actually take over, take over. Look, I'm not even it, I'm not here. I, look, well, so I'm not here to be here all night. I already said I had to leave like a long time ago. And I do. Really, OK, so well, if you, if you want to leave, nobody's keeping fine. you here. I just I just know well, that Tom has asked me to speak to you once come. or twice. And I thought I, I just happened to see you're talking to him. So I was like, yeah, oh, this is no one. Ask her. I know for a fact, because ask herself and I have talked about this. He has been trying to get the contradiction from Darth entailed in atheism for what years? Never has uh, well, gotten an answer. J. Robin for, says for he's while, got it. But to, to be clear, with with Darth, it's the contradiction that falls from agnosticism. It's even even weirder claim. Well, J. Uh, yeah, J. Robin has that view too. But I think you should just continue going down this road trying to get the argument because he hasn't spelled out the argument that leads to that inference, and he says he doesn't know why you don't follow it. But you're writing everything down, so he's yeah. writing everything you're saying down. So you can just go ahead and present the inference, right? Uh, by the way, ask yourself, just just so you know, he doesn't actually know when the material conditional is false. So him struggling to come up with an argument. Uh, yeah, that's a lie. Okay, so when is it false? You mean if premise or scenario one, scenario two, or PQ? When, when is the material conditional false? If the second... If, if you're saying like A, A then B, then B, if B is false, then it would be false. What, if B what, is false? What if A and B are both false? Like, okay, if so A and we're, B are we're false, going... that, that doesn't matter. That wouldn't change. That yeah. wouldn't change the, the truth of, of the material. Well, if, if A and B are Anyways, both. Anyways, look. So, wait, just, well, do you do you, do you wait, have do you have any more? Do you have yeah, any I, more? Yeah, I want to go. I want to go back. Have any more? My, yeah. Do you have any? Uh, you have another question? Make it short, please, because. Well, it's it's not really another. It is the it is the same line of reasoning, okay. but I just I just want to say one or two things. So, like, first of all, I do appreciate what Josh is saying there. So he's he's obviously talking about propositional logic, right? And there's these um. There's the material conditional is an operator in propositional logic. And when he's asking when it's true, the idea is like it's true under certain. No, he asked, yes, when it's false. I, okay, well, when it's true or when it's false, whichever question it might be. The answer to that is going to be you look at under what conditions is the material conditional true in terms of what are the truth values of the um, variables in the material conditional, right? So you can go if P is Q and true is Q, if P is true and Q is false, if P is false and Q is true, or if both are false. And he's pointing out that you don't obviously like, and I'm not saying this to rip on you, but you obviously don't understand this. Because I just told you. Well, I just what, told you if you had A and B, A yeah, then when, B. When then they're if, both, yeah, and if, when if, they're if both B. false, is the material conditional true or false? It would still be true. Yeah, so it's it's false under that condition. But like, I don't I don't want to just rip on you for not like knowing logic. I just if I'm A just and B I are false. Yeah, the, it's it's kind of weird, but yeah, if you learn like proposition, I can show you if you want. I can screen share. But if you learn like propositional logic, it's actually true under those conditions. It's only false when you have. I just told you it's true. Uh, I just said if, if, if only if B is false, then it still be false. Any other scenario? I just want you guys to know yeah, everything when, you're saying when, is going so far over Jay Robin's head that it's taking out the Hubble well, Space Telescope. I, okay, I, see, I don't, I, I just don't, I don't need anyone to chime in when I'm talking. If someone wants to take over, go for it. But I don't want to gang beat him. Um, right. So with um, I, okay, it's possible I misheard you, 
but what truth value does the material conditional have when both the antecedent okay. and I already, the I already, I already told you. I already told I you. You can go back. You can go back to the to the recording. Um, if that's the last. But yeah, but why not just say it again okay. to help the discussion? Well, here, what, because well, there's no I more have, discussion I, to be had. So you I don't. So then, why are you still here? You said you wanted a discussion. Oh, because I don't want to just rudely leave like you would do. You know. Okay. Yeah. Leaving isn't rude. Leo, say for well, word, Leo. Can, I, can, I, can I communicate with this guy for a second? So, yeah, now I, it's possible I misheard you. I've learned not to trust my memory. I've smoked too much weed, but I thought that I heard you say that the material conditional um, is false in the condition where the antecedent and the consequent are false. No, that's not, that's not what I said at all. I said it would be true. Okay. I, I am kind of skeptical because i thought i heard the other way but I well, you can go back to the thing i told you i said it was true but anyways yeah, if, is that the, is yeah, that the no, last thing I'm, you want to hear no 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 i haven't even happening? started like oh so well i'm not gonna i'm not gonna look if you're gonna go down the long line of, of, of well line it's the same I'm it's not gonna the same that, so well, one sec why there's too much fucking tension in the air dude like just calm down let's just talk for a second so like okay now with the logic thing it's possible I misheard you. If you if you actually did get the truth value right and I misheard, that's fine. Look, I already I already told you. Can I complete three a times. sentence? Can, no, can, not if on, you're going to just say the same thing four times. I, 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 Rabin, I will keep done. trying to get through my sentence. Yeah, that would be yeah, Jay, nice. Jay Rabin, but, so, uh, a Rabin, well, A Y. Okay, sorry. no, you muted himself. I was no, I was just going to chat no, him. Go ahead. No, it's it's fine. Okay, so yeah, so with respect to the logic thing, if I misheard, that's fine. Um, I thought that I heard you say that the material conditional is uh false when the antecedent and consequent are both false and that's yeah, not that's true kind of but it could it, can i please complete a fucking sentence dude well you just now, made a false assertion can, or assumption but okay. no i Look, did okay is that, is this, I told, is this, I told, is this can i complete is that it? a sentence is that it is that all I'm you trying, want to know i'm about trying to conditional? dude like okay, jay rabbit you're ramping it back up again pretty frustrating yeah if you're trying to get i don't want to waste time here i'm trying to get well can i complete what i'm saying dude okay so and I, I am going to try to repeat the whole thing and actually get through the sentence. So when you cut me off, like you're not doing anyone favors because all that goes is I go, fuck, okay, now I have to restart again, right? So, okay, so what I was saying was I could be wrong about the logic thing. Maybe I misheard, maybe you misspoke, right? I don't know. Or maybe you didn't understand. I, I'm not sure which it is, okay? But the, the impression I was under, I thought I heard you say that the material conditional is... Um, false when the antecedent and consequent are both false and it's actually true under those conditions so yeah okay and then just with the with and and i'm fully aware maybe you didn't say that okay so whatever now um with respect to the the god thing so yeah you you were not understanding why i didn't follow your inference so the yeah i guess that all i could say is i don't understand which inference rules that you're using to get from that first proposition that god doesn't exist to the conclusion that uh, flour is required to make a cake, and it's not the case that flour is required to make a cake. So if you could spell out that inference, that's what I'm hung up on. Okay, so I'll, I'll tell you again. If we accept the first syllogism, which is that which, flour which is, is required, I'll tell you, flour yeah. is required for a cake, there is a cake, therefore there is flour, okay? Now, if we accept that as true, and if it's sound, okay, then somebody comes to you proposing a state of affairs, of course, that can't actually be actual. If the argument is sound, then this this would only be a hypothetical. Mm -hmm. Somebody comes to you proposing that there is just a cake that just sits there stand alone without flour, then we would reject that because in such a scenario, then flour would not be required to make a cake when we've already established that it is the case that flour is required to make a cake. Okay, that's it. Okay, so the problem that I'm having, I have like a kind of vague, intuitive sense of what you're saying but i guess there's two things if you don't understand what so, i said i'm not i'm not going to go in more too deep with it because i again yeah, so so the, fir the first thing is the first thing is was one of the premises in that argument that god doesn't exist no i just told you that's an analogy okay, so can i can i raise a criticism then right so the whole thing that you have to do is start from the premise that god doesn't exist that's what you're trying to derive the problem from right then from that premise, via some sequence of valid inferences, reach the conclusion that flour is required to make the case and it's not the case that flour is required to make a cake. So if your argument to get to that conclusion didn't actually start from the proposition 
that um, God doesn't exist. They don't it's not starting with God doesn't exist. So the the flour would be the God. What's required? Okay, the cake wait. Would that, be, the cake I thought would that's. Be, can I say the cake would that be, then? No, no. If you didn't understand, then I'm going to explain it to you. Well, the, the flour well, would be the God. Well, that would be the precondition. I, that would be the precondition. The cake would be intelligibility. You know those kind of things: rationality, logic, etc. And then the conclusion would be therefore God. Okay. Now, if, if okay. somebody comes, if we accept that as true. Then if somebody says, I have the cake, I have the intelligibility, I have the knowledge, I have the et cetera, without God, then we can reject that as as, as a possible or as an actual world. Very simple. Okay. So, so that's that's the analogy fleshed out for you. Okay. So what I what I thought I heard at the start was you sign off when I said that you believe that there's a contradiction that's entailed if theism is false. Yeah, if somebody presents the theism worldview, then yeah, that would be false because in, by, in virtue, by virtue of of what we've shown to be true, which is that so, God is required for a metaphor or I, required for intelligibility. So, let, so let I sure asked I'm him for the contradiction in atheism. Yeah, well, okay. So it's it, there's also a further question. There is is this a contradiction on atheism or just on? It's well, a contradiction, okay, so once, it's a contradiction. Sec, but, atheism would be the not okay, God, okay, not well, God here, position. The, so yes, without without going. Okay, right. Yeah. So if we just construe, yeah, that and that's I I would rather think of atheism like that and use the word agnosticism for the like middling position or whatever. But okay, so yeah, the inference that's being so yeah. Do do you think that a contradiction is entailed if theism is false? Because that's what I thought you were saying. Yeah, it would be a violation of the first premise of my argument. Okay. And if it's sound, then it would so, be... Okay. And the contradiction that is entailed, if theism is false, is that flour is required to bake a cake, and it's not the case that flour is required to bake a cake, right? Well, there's no if theism is false. I mean, it would just be, if you're going to posit it as a hypothetical, you compare it to what has been shown to be true, oh, okay. and there's a contradiction right there. I thought that you said that there's going to be a contradiction if theism is false. Yes, if you can, if you could, if you, then we should be saying again, if it's the case that what what we have is true, the first argument that God is required for intelligibility, then trying to uh, uh, appeal to a hypothetical world where God is not there, you'd lead to a contradiction. Yes. Yeah. So I'm I'm just trying to very succinctly kind of sum sum up what you're saying, right? So I understand the direction you're going, and then I have really the same critique because I think that's what. Please don't come after some so. Oh, maybe I heard someone else talk there. Sorry. Um, yeah. So to be clear, th this is kind of like just a yes or no. You are saying that a contradiction is entailed if theism is false, right? Yeah. There's a, there's a contradiction with the, with the first okay. uh, scenario. Yes. So, so yeah. And then do you have an argument that goes from the proposition that theism is false to that contradiction? Yeah, the whole the whole point is that you're positing atheism or non-theism uh, with the belief that God is not required, but it's been established that God is required. Okay, so basically, that yeah, so that's what I want. I want that inference that goes from the proposition that theism is. I false. just explained it to you. Look, I'm not going to do this yeah, round, but no, round. No, no way. No, you round, explain. Round, you, round. Can, can I try to provide right. some clarification? One, 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 one second. We're, we're not going to do this, Carousel. We're, 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 we're around get, around. Wait, wait, wait. We're getting. Some, wait, one second. But no, I don't really what, have time no, for this. One, well, wait, Jay, Jay Robin. What I don't accept, right, is when I try to get clarity on what you're saying, and I sit here, you know, patiently going through your position with you. It feels to me. Like when I try to get the clarity, you don't want that to happen. So let's just oh, actually, I've done just, it. What, just be, let me be so clear. No, that, so that, I, would be, I, that would only be true if you asked me okay, one okay. time and then I just booted it off the stage. Well, and that's not what happened. But, I explained it think, to you now 14 yeah, but, times. No, no, no. But and you, you can't, to, you can't to be wait. You can't just say one second. Yeah. You can't just say I've explained it to you and assume that that's adequate, right? Because I've given you a very specific challenge, which is to lay out the inference. Now, I already did. I told you that. Wait, the, wait if, a second. If, wait a if, second. If, please, if it is the case, please, please, so look, I'm going to explain. Look, I'll explain it. I'll explain Robin, it one more time. One sec. I'm, I, let Listen, me finish I'm gonna, my sentence. I'm going to tell man. you. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. Are you just waiting so I'm I get frustrated? What, so then you like no, when no. I get I'm just going to. I'm going to make. I'm actually going to make this very quick. But I'm going to make this very quick. I'm going to make this. I please. I am going to make this very quick. I'm going to make this very quick. Why hasn't Jay Robin been thrown? 
going back to so, so look, this is very Oh, easy. man. I'm, just this let me say easy. something before. One second. Jay Rabin. Let me, Jay Rabin, wait, please, 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 please. Whoever let, that is, just please stop for a second. Okay. Hang on. Just, let a, one Jay Rabin, let a Just one second. Whoever AY, stop, this is my please. channel, bro. Nice okay, to just, meet you. I'm <laughs> trying so, to get him. And, okay. Are you going to let me talk to the guy or not? Yes. As soon as I get done moderating. Okay. The well, fuck, I don't, I don't Jay Robin. I... If you pipe up okay. again, knock that shit off. Uh, let this guy look, finish his I'm just point. Trying, all, then... all that I want to say is just, this: just let it happen, Jefferson, because it's not going to last I'm long, trying, anyways. Trying to try, try, okay, just one second. So, God sorry, damn. I'm, get, I'm getting a bit frustrated. Don't mean to be a dick to Jefferson. I'm sorry, but like I'm just a bit annoyed. Okay, so because I have Jay Robin here telling me, look, I've spelled out the inference, and effectively, like you're condescending to me, right? You're talking to me like I'm too stupid to understand what you just said. Now, I don't I don't mean to like flex or whatever, but like I actually do understand some of these concepts, like how formal logic works. I actually can sit here and draw out proofs for you. Right. I can do that kind of thing. Now, I'm asking you not to just give the inference in natural language because you're right. Yes, you have done that. My problem is that not English language, natural language inferences can be very ambiguous, very unclear, and oftentimes an, a natural language inference, when you actually try to formalize it to get clear in an algebraic manner about what the structure of the argument is, just falls apart. Your argument, I'm not clear what the actual inference structure is. So can you spell it out? And make sure to do so in a way that's formally valid. That's the okay. first. So I'll explain this. Condition. I'll explain this yeah. one more time. Okay. Then, if you want to give a closing statement, then you can, and then and then we'll wrap okay. this up. Okay. But but Jay Robin, so, do, so it, you, for, you, do you, it formally. You finish. Though. You finish. You finish making your request. I'm going to make. The, I'm going to yeah. answer you. Okay. But, and then, but you the, it, then you can the give request, a close. Then you can give. Clear, the request then isn't you can just give a close. Yeah, but, then you can give a closing. Then you can give a closing answer. But I don't know that you understand the request when I say I do. I understand your request. Okay. Okay. So so just to be clear, wait, Jay Robin, one second. When I say formal, when I say formal, I do. I do. I'm trying to get an answer to the same question. I'm about to let you speak about it, but I just want to be clear about something. So let me explain. Jay Robin, it's not going to work. You're going to have a chance to make a closing argument. Dude, look, I'm worse than dark for this. You're going to you're going to have. I'll just. I'd sooner get kicked from the thing than let than let you do this. So I'm going to complete my sentence. I'm going to complete my sentence. Absolutely, I'm going to let you answer once I complete my sentence, Jay Robin. You already did. What? No, I didn't. Yes, you... I want to. No. Why, I, Jay I, Robin, I, stop. I will say I'm done. I will say I'm done when I'm done talking. Okay. I'm, I'm not, not going to do this if you're not going to stop. Jay Robin, stop, Jay Robin. I'm, I'm going to give my answer let to me, you. Let me get my words across. Okay. Now, I just want to be clear. When I say I want the argument in a way that's formal, I want you to give the structure algebraically. So actually, before even speaking in English, okay, before saying anything to me in English, just tell me the propositional variables and the connectors between them. What's the first premise? Okay, I already explained it to you. I'm going to explain it to you one more time. Mm -hmm. And then after you do that, you can give a closing statement and then we'll wrap this up. Okay. Yep. And I'll cut you off. So the, it's not first, the first, the first, mm -hmm. the first argument is as follows. Okay. That in the case of God, we're talking about God being the necessary That's not condition. Algebra. I'm we're going to cut you off. I want algebra. So, so I'm not going to, so look, if you cut me off again, we're done. If yep, you cut me I'll off keep again, doing that. we're done. We want algebra. Sorry, then go we need, ahead with so look, the can you can you moderate? Okay. Hang on. Can you on. moderate? Gonna, so I'm not gonna so look I'm every time every time you, I I'm gonna to mute speak. you both. I'm gonna mute you both because just here's what be I'm clear, gonna do. I, I will leave if muted. So J just to be clear, J Robin, algebra. Yeah, we're not we're not doing that. No, I'm not getting threatened on my own fucking show. All of you can knock that shit off. I'm tired and I'm pissed off at this debate bro bullshit. J Robin, fuck off back to Clubhouse. Hey why? It was nice to meet you. I like a lot of your content. I'm sorry I'm a dick right now, but I'm exhausted, and this is really just kind of frazzling me. I'm not following no, any no, of this shit understand. at all. No, and I think it's justified. boring the shit out of everybody else in the channel. So I'm going to end this broadcast. Any of you that would like to talk afterward, great. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Like or dislike if you didn't like the fact that I went all fucking surly on it. My apologies <laughs> to AY. My apologies to J. Robin for being a dick. Um, normally, I try not to do that, but um, getting over a flu probably push this a little too late. I need sleep. So, but that's not going to keep me from uh, gossiping after we're, we're gone. We've been talking shit about all y'all in the live chat. Anyway, everybody have a great night. Take care of yourselves. Read some philosophy books or don't. Um, night, everybody.